Stephanie and Josh started dating as teenagers, and they admit that jealousy has been a big issue in their relationship. But lately, Josh has been checking Stephanie's body and underwear for signs of cheating, pushing her around, and has even spit in her face when he thought she had been with another man. Stephanie says Josh has crossed the line. All this and more on today's Steve Wilco Show. It's worth it to me to just let him look at my private parts than to go through a fight. You're living with a nut job. Okay, this is one side of the story, you guys. I have a reason to not trust her. I was raped by a guy. He tells me that I was cheating and that I should have fought harder. What gives you the right to do that? But you've never been raped. How do you know that? I love this woman, man, and it's driving me crazy. She stay out 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. He think all women's cheap. I love you too much to do something like that. Are you cheating on that? No. Now, she comes to you and says, hey, I'm pregnant. Is you yes. pregnant? You took a pregnancy test. I want to see them results right there then. Before I, I read these results, is there anything that you want to tell him? Yes. When we were dating, he had no problem touching, squeezing, groping on me in the shower, in the bedroom. You think he's groping somewhere else? And that's exactly what I'm thinking. Where do I have the time? It don't take but two minutes to do it. You don't look like a cheater. I don't care. I mean, I'm begging you to grow. Give me a little fuck thumb. Are you cheating on Shalisa with the woman who walks her dogs in front of your house? And you said, woof. No, I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> I called the show because I've been dating Josh for six years now. We have two beautiful children, um, and he's always thought that I'm cheating on him from the beginning. It's always been really ridiculous. It's crazy. He checks me. He um, smells me. He'll smell me. When you, when you say he checks you, what does that encompass? It, looking at my private parts, smelling me, um, feeling me. And what is, what is he exactly looking for? I don't know, signs of another man, I suppose. It's, it's degrading. Um, it used why to hurt me for a long time. Let me ask time. you, why do you allow him to do that? I, because it's, it's just worth it to me. I love him so much and I want to be with him. I don't, it's worth it to me to just let him do it than to go through a fight. But uh, my point is, if you love somebody and they love you, uh, you don't degrade each other. Of course. <laughs> Um, why, why does he constantly accuse you of cheating? I mean, have you ever cheated on him? I've never cheated on him, no. Um, he thinks he sees signs everywhere, like somebody will drive slow by my house and he'll think that's a man that's waiting for him to leave to come over. Um, I'll wait for him to get home and I'll be dressed nice for him and stuff and he'll think that it's because another man was there. You're living with a nut job. Yeah. <laughs> And so you're here today because why? You're here to prove to him that, that you didn't cheat on him? I'm here to prove that I didn't cheat on him, and I'm here because um, when me and Josh first got together, I was 15 years old, and I went to go party with a friend, and I obviously shouldn't have been partying at that young of an age, but um, I was raped by a guy. And um, Josh tells me I was so scared I didn't tell him for a year. I felt really guilty about it, and I um, talked to my therapist, and she told me that I didn't need to tell him, so I didn't. But he um, tells me that it's my fault and that I was cheating and that I should have fought harder. Some of the other stuff you can say, okay, he's being a nut job, but to be traumatized by such an event um, what this man did to you six years ago. Do you really believe that somebody could love you and throw this in your face and make you live that horror over every day? Not when he's doing it. I feel like he should be holding me and comforting me instead how and often, loving how, me. How often does he bring it up to you? It just, it just depends. I mean, one night we were at a hotel and we were watching a Lifetime movie where a woman had been raped and I wasn't showing any emotion, so he just started telling me that I wasn't really raped and 
uh, we started fighting and I just told him, what am I supposed to do, continue to live in my past? I can't. What I guess is you took a lie detector test on whether you were raped? Yes. I mean, how sad is that? That you have to take a lie detector test to prove to somebody that you love that you were brutalized. Now, I am told he accused you of having sex with a family member. Yes. Um, we went on a tubing trip, and um, we got there, me and a little later than everybody, so he thought that I was having sex with the both of them and proceeded to reach over and put his fingers in see if there was anything in there. One thing I'm, I'm concerned about is that you did have this terrible thing happen to you. And now, in a way, he's violating you in a sexual way um, when he does something like that. I just don't think any man that truly loved you would subject you to that, knowing um, what happened in your past. And, and I got to say, first of all, I think it's brave that you're out here and that you can talk about that. <clears throat> certainly can't be an easy thing to uh, talk about. No. Um, so, on, on, you know, on these cards, it has, like, you know, what's the worst thing he has done to you? Well, I can't imagine anything worse than what he's done already that you explained to me. Um, yeah. Is there? I mean, to me, that's the worst, but he's spit in my eye. I'm pretty sure he had chewing tobacco in his mouth when he did it um, because he thought I was cheating on him and he pushed me into the car door and I fell to the ground. What gives you the right to do that? You've never been raped. How do you know that? Josh, you came here and you, you took a lie detector test and you were asked, besides one time in the last three years, have you had any other sexual physical contact with anyone besides Stephanie? You answered no. What gives you the right to do that? That you've never been raped. How do you know that? Now, I guess he took a lie detector test too, right? Yes, he did. And what if he's cheating? Um, I don't, I don't know. He's already admitted to me to cheating on me once. He's oh. asked me to sleep with him once. I, I want to, like, what would he have to do for you to break up with him? He's cheated on you. He wanted to have sex with your He doesn't believe that something horrible happened to you. He spit in your eye. He constantly accuses you. What could he possibly do where you'd say, I'm done? I'm not going to keep taking it. That's why I'm here. Let's bring him out. Here's Josh. <laughs> So far off, Stephanie. Okay, this is one side of the story, that's guys. All right, that's all right. You know damn good and well what's been happening between us, Steph. And a lot of this that she's been stating is two sided, you know? I have a reason to not trust her. Okay, and what would that reason be? It's not like you don't lie to me over and over and over and over and over well, about everything. You interrogate me, though. You sit there I didn't and interrogate you interrogate in the beginning. me, and then my head becomes so. I don't even know what. What to say? I don't know what you, to do. You tell me a story, Josh? and then I interrogate it, and then it changes. Um, like it's all sugar-coated. I believe that when she tells the story of being raped, she talks about this brutal thing that happened to her, and she cries, and you could see the pain in her talking about this incident that happened to her about six years ago. And you constantly make her relive it by throwing it up in her face. Imagine if you got raped... And then you had to talk about it all the time, over and over. And then people were like, no, you're gay. You loved it. Can you imagine? No, I can't imagine. Right. You can't imagine. If somebody constantly said, uh, you, you, you asked to be raped. Or you didn't fight hard enough. Can you imagine that? What gives you the right to do that? Do you really love her? I do. How about, what about comfort? What about support? 
What about I'll protect you, make sure it never happens again? You, you know, like I agree totally. That's why we're here, is so that we can we can overcome these things, you know. Because that's my why you're here. Is, you're here, why? To so I could take all the suspicion out of your mind. Well, yeah, that would help, and it would also help for Stephanie because she's not going to have to deal with all this. Uh, Who's putting it in there, though? I am, but I do know that she's dishonest with me. And how and is she rarely... How is she dishonest with you? Well, there's been many instances. I can't even. Let me the last one. The last one would be. I can't even. I can't even tell you right now. Well, then if you can't tell me. I just want both sides of the story to be told. You have your chance. She, yes. Speak. Well, it's been spoken. Like, I, I can't trust the word she tells me because the story changed. You know what? Changed. I'm going like to ask a... you to leave the stage just for a minute so he can have the floor. Nobody's going to interrupt him, and I'll bring you right back out. <laughs> have at it. <laughs> okay, so... In the beginning, she went to this party, right? She, took to, she was taken advantage of. She said she uh, woke up, didn't have clothes. This man was on top of her, taking advantage. She was kicking front and trying to get away, this and that. And I was there for her. I comforted her. I held her tight, you know? That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to support her in a way I would have liked to have been supported. But and you've never been raped. How do you know that? Have you been raped? Well, yes. You have been raped. Okay, hold on. So you have been, right? I don't want to tell people. Okay, this. right. You don't want to talk about it, right? No, it's... Okay, so it's, it's, it's a hard thing, right? It's a horrible thing that happens to you. Yeah, and okay. she tried so to... So why are you taking your pain, your anger out on her? That is what it looks like on huh? reflection of that. Let's find out if... Stephanie's a liar. When you were 15 years old, were you taken advantage of? You answered yes. And the result is that Stephanie. I love this woman, man, and it's driving me crazy. She stay out 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. He think all women's cheap. Josh, you came here and you, you took a lie detector test, and you were asked, besides one time in the last three years, have you had any other sexual physical contact with anyone besides Stephanie? You answered no. Do you cheat on her? I have. Do you cheat on her currently? No. When's the last time you did cheat on her? It's about three years ago. Three years ago. Now she's here and she took a lie detector test, which I find it appalling that we even have to test her on whether she was raped. Right. You claimed that you experienced the same thing. Uh, I hope there was. Did we give you? Asked. Did we give you the same question about whether you were really raped? No. No, we didn't do that for just you. Just cheating. Yeah, just cheating. We had to do that to her. We had to ask her if that really happened. I believe. No, you don't believe. You keep throwing it up in her face. I don't do that anymore, Steve. When's the last time? I'm sure she'd tell a different story. When's the last time you did it? Um, it was. It was in a heated argument, probably within a 12-month period. A 12-month period. Hmm. That's sad. Um, so if she comes out here and she passes this test, lie detector on whether this incident happened, whether she's cheating, and she tells the truth, what's going to happen? It sounds selfish, but it'll settle some things in my mind, and I will be able to handle the little fibs that an everyday person gives to a, another person, but it's not... Wouldn't you say that you have some issues that you need to de be dealt with professionally? Yes. Okay. Um, let's bring uh, Stephanie back out. <laughs> when is the last time he questioned you about the incident that happened when you were 15? Uh, a couple of nights ago. A couple of nights ago? Couple of nights ago. I guess that is within ago? a 12 month period. <laughs> right. I, I, I think some people that come on my show are just nutty, immature guys. I think that things that have happened to you have caused you to act this way. I don't think it's just a case of immaturity. I, don't, I think bad things have happened in your past. I, you know, if there's some way we can help you, uh, I gladly would. Um, but if you go home, I definitely, in your case, would seek somebody to talk to. I, I would hope that this here helps you to some degree so you can move back and so you can be a good father. 
But ultimately, if your relationship ends, you'll be the cause of the demise. You will. Um, Josh, you came here and you, you took a lie detector test, and you were asked, besides one time in the last three years, which you obviously know about, have you had any other sexual physical contact with anyone besides Stephanie? She, you answered no. Right. You told the truth. Besides one time in the last three years, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone besides Stephanie? You answered no. You told the truth. Um, <laughs> the sad thing is, though, she didn't want this. She's not questioning you. She's not accusing you of cheating. But let's find out if Stephanie's a liar. Stephanie, uh, you love Josh. You have, you know, two kids. You're raising them. And you want your relationship to work. Yes, I do. Um, how long could you continue living a life like you're living? I couldn't. That's why I called the show. I can't do it anymore. I have okay, kids to I. take care of. It's crazy. Stephanie came here today because she wants to save her relationship, and she cannot continue to live in the way she has, so she came here to prove to you certain things. Um, we asked you, besides when you were broken up, have you had sexual, physical contact with anyone else while together with Josh? You answered no. Besides when you were broken up, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone else while together with Josh? You answered no. When you were 15 years old and got drunk at a party, were you taken advantage of? You answered yes. And the results for each and every one of these questions is that Stephanie told the truth. Um, you both have went through some very difficult times. I hope, I hope that this piece of paper puts an end to the insanity. It well, has to. That it helps rest that mind, that you're not constantly racing thoughts. Thank you, Steve. I, I, I hope. I, I truly want that to I be the case. so much. I don't think that that's going to be the cure-all. I think that you do need to continue to seek some kind of therapy we'll look for to slow that mind down a little bit. If we can provide it, or if there's some place that you can continue with back home, I, I would love to have you guys back on the show someday and find out that all this insanity has gone away. And I wish you nothing. So grateful. Yes, thank Good luck you very you. much. <laughs> Now, she comes to you and says, hey, I'm pregnant. Is you yes. pregnant? You took a pregnancy test. I want to see them results right there, then. Before I, I read these results, is there anything that you want to tell me? Yes. Now, she comes to you and says, hey, I'm pregnant. Is you yes. pregnant? You took a pregnancy test. I want to see them results right there, then. Johnny is concerned because he says his girlfriend, Sarah, stays out until all hours of the night instead of being home with their two-year-old daughter. And now he believes Sarah is lying about being pregnant with his child. Johnny is tired of the lies and called me for help. Well, today I want to find out if my girl is cheating or not, and I want to know if she's really pregnant. Um, how long have you been with her? Like three, two to three years off and on, but lately... We've been together like six months. We don't move in together. It and you have real... one child together already, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do you love her? Yes, I love her with all my heart. I'm talking about I want to marry this lady. You want to marry her? Yes. Yeah, she's 10 years older than me. She's 10 years older. 10 years older than me. Now, she comes to you and says, hey, I'm pregnant. And I, I was so happy to hear about this right here. 
But when she was time for her to go to the doctor, I asked her, hey, I want to go to the doctor with you. Now, which woman would want her man to go to the doctor with her? So Most women do. She just said, no, I, I already made an appointment. The doctor said, I got to come in by myself. No, I ain't never heard no doctor say you got to come in by yourself. <laughs> I don't understand none of that right there. That is uh, kind of unusual. Um, now, I understand you're here today because you believe that she's cheating on you. Yes. Why do you think that she's cheating on you? Because, like, say, it's, we had a job together. Me and her worked together for a minute. Every day we come in, our thing was take the shower together. But lately, she was, I got my same job, but she got her another job. But lately, when I come in, she already took a shower. Or I come in, she'll run to the shower real quick, take a shower. I think she's sleeping with somebody while I'm at work. And because she's taking a shower? No, not, even, not only because of that. Like, one, one day the cell phone ring, I answered the cell phone. A uh, dude was on the cell phone, like, what's up, babe? I'm like, oh, you got the wrong number, partner. <laughs> I mean, so a after that right there, he, he was like, let me speak to Sarah. I was like, all right. I put it on speaker and had her the phone. He like, what up, boo? When can we hook up, so, so? And she like, nah, that's just a friend. He just playing with you, trying to make you mad. And then it's, it's, up, it's other stuff other than that right there. Like, just say instant. I come home from work, she ain't even at home. She stay out 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and come back and tell me she with her friends. I ain't with that. I ain't... That's a little unusual. Yes, it is. It's uh, very, very unusual. What's your relationship like now? It's, it's iffy. It's like, it done got real physical. It done got arguments every day because I'm thinking she cheating. So now that this help. is in my head, I'm, I don't push her. I don't got no lie to tell nobody. I don't put you my hands on her. Me. Yes. I don't talk Which, to her a couple you know times. I went to jail. And I, I, I don't want to be that person because that ain't me. It ain't me. It's just I love this woman, man, and it's driving me crazy on the cheating part because I'm thinking she's cheating, and I just want to know if she's cheating or not. You believe that she might be lying about being pregnant? Yes. Well, why would lying. why would she lie about being pregnant? I don't know. And, and if she is lying, or does like put a knife through my heart or something. Know what I mean, because you don't tell a man you pregnant with his child and end up ain't pregnant. Now we gave her a pregnancy test, and she took a lie detector test. What if she fails the lie detector test for cheating on you? Oh my God! I love her so much. Know what I mean? I just can't help because I really love this lady, man. But. If if she's ain't pregnant, is she like, is she cheap? I gotta go. I'll just take care, my go. <laughs> take care of my dog. All right, let's uh, let's bring out the girl that is your dream girl, right? She's your dream girl. Let's bring out Sarah. believe you think I'm cheating on you. No, I just want you to put know your hands on me every time you I gotta find out the truth if you cheating on me or not, no. I gotta find out if you cheating on me. I'm not cheating on you, I'm not cheating on you. I'm not cheating on you. I'm not cheating on you. I ain't never cheating on you. I love you too much to do something like that to you. Is you real pregnant? Is you pregnant? Are you cheating on her? No. 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 You are not cheating on her. You are not I've never cheated on him. Okay. You guys have been together for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. um, Off and on. And you, you have one child already. Yes. And uh, how do you feel about him? I love him. You love him? I love him with all my good heart. Good guy? He is a real good guy. Okay. Why do you think is making him believe that you're, you're cheating? Because he all the other women he don't been with, a lot of them don't cheat it on him, and he think all women cheat. Um, do you go out a lot during the week till 1 o'clock in the say morning? All I'm asking you. No. I might go out and have a few drinks with my friends. We got a two-year-old daughter, but I... you want to stay out 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Come on, It man. might be late when I come in. <laughs> I, you took a pregnancy test. Before I, I read these results, is there anything that you want to tell him? Yes. Baby. When we were dating... He had no problem touching, squeezing, groping on me. You think he's groping somewhere else. And that's exactly what I'm thinking. While in a relationship with Johnny, have you ever had sexual intercourse with anyone else? You answered no. You 
you took a pregnancy test. Before I, I read these results, is there anything that you want to tell him? Yes, baby. Oh. You know I love you with all my heart. You my world. You my everything. I want to marry you, but I am not pregnant. I already, I already knew that anyway, though. Listen, I already knew listen, that anyway. But listen, I was testing you to see where you going to keep hitting me. And you did. Hey, come on, you man. Hit, but check this right here, though. Okay, what if I was pregnant? You, you, and you, you was claim hitting? you ain't listen, pregnant. Listen, well, you ain't pregnant now, but you listen. expect me to believe that you, you ain't cheating. Is you gonna listen to you what expect I'm me to believe you ain't cheating? Yes. I want to see them results right there. Then. Is you gonna listen? You can play them and talk about you ain't cheating. You ain't cheating. You cheating. Cheating. Be cheating. lying on this test. I'm out of here. You don't got to worry about me no more. All right, um, sir. You came here and you took a lie detector test. And is there anything you want to tell him now? No. No. Okay. While in a relationship with Johnny, have you ever had sexual intercourse with anyone else? You answered no, and you did not tell the truth. That's a lie. I I did not cheat on you at all. That's Lie. I knew it. I swear to God, I knew that. <laughs> got me out here like this right here. It's cool, though. I'm out of here, though. You don't got to worry about it. I'm gone. <laughs> me, that much. I'm gone. I want to know. I want to know. Who was it? Who you cheat with? Who was it? Who I else was it? I cheat with no damn body. Who was it? Nobody. Who was it? Nobody. Come on, man. That, you know that, it that, Lie. You know it and I know it. I ain't it. cheated with nobody. You know it and I nobody. know it. I knew nobody. you cheated, though. I ain't cheated with I nobody. You cheated. Nobody. You know, I'm out of here, though. You don't got to worry about that. Here's, here's the thing. Even if... Who, what difference does it make who it is? Um, if she, and, and, and listen. If you want to say you didn't, you didn't. I didn't. But, but the fact I is... knew it, man. Hold on, hold on. The fact is, you lied about being pregnant. He's saying... You know, your your whole behavior has changed. You're you're not taking showers with them anymore. You're staying out late at night. I mean, what man wouldn't become suspicious of that kind of behavior? He obviously loves you very much. I love him too. And the thought of what's married going on. He wants he want he said he wants to marry you. I want to go to marry you. Um, and I think deep down, and I could be wrong, but I, I think that some level he still wants to be with you. Is there anything that you could say to him to make him feel okay and want to stay with you? Nothing, because I have not done anything. I mm, did not cheat on him bitch, at all. Wrong. But even I think you did something. I ain't done nothing. Okay. I'm, but you don't have to convince me. I know. Baby, I'm telling you the truth. I did not cheat oh, on you. Man. Come here, listen. Come on, Sarah. You tripping. You failed both tests. You didn't just follow one of them. You failed both of them. You tripping. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm ready to walk off now. Good luck to you. I hope, no matter what, I hope you can work things out. If things don't work out, you're still going to be a good dad, right? Yes, sir. All right, Take good luck care of mine. All right. I wish you all luck. Take care. You think he's groping somewhere else? And that's exactly what I'm thinking. Where do I have the time? It don't take but two minutes to do it. Are you cheating on Shalisa with the woman who walks her dogs in front of your house? And you said, woof. No, I want on. <laughs> you think he's groping somewhere else? And that's exactly what I'm thinking. Where do I have the time? It don't take but two minutes to do it. Walter and Shalisa have been together for 15 years, but lately things aren't going so well. You see, Walter's being accused of sleeping with everyone in the neighborhood, but Walter thinks Shalisa has been watching too much daytime TV. Um, Shalisa, what's going on? Do you watch a lot of daytime TV? I do. Do you watch my show? Yes, That's I do. That's all that matters. You keep watching. I don't care what he says. <laughs> yeah. 
So you believe, and you're married, right? Yes. How long have you been married for? Eight years. Eight years, a long time. Um, and you believe that your husband is sleeping with a lot of women in the neighborhood? I do. And why do you think that? There's a couple of um, our neighbors. Um, she has a couple of dogs. She's um, got a couple of dogs? Yeah. And um, she walks them. And um, I've caught her um, standing in front of my house. And you said she must be sleeping with my husband. No, no, no. No, she was, she was just standing there. And um, I came outside, and she just runs off, okay, with her dogs. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, so you walk that was outside, the, and she just like. She, yeah, she took off. So I'm like, okay, no problem. That's a little strange. Right, it is a little strange, okay. So um, my husband had told me that they had spoke before. I mean, you, it's something going on. If you're I mean, not speaking, really, I, I mean, mean you're most... speaking to my husband, but you're not speaking to me. Right, I mean, and if you're You know what I'm saying? And, you, and you're turning your nose up at me. And, she's and I've been on my block eight years. You've been on the block. The other thing that kind of upset me with my husband is the fact that we've been married, I said, 18, I mean, eight, eight years. years. We've been together 15, okay? When we were dating, he had no problem touching, squeezing, groping. You. On me in the shower, in the bedroom, and I told him, I said... He's not groping no more. He's not groping. You think he's groping somewhere else? And that's exactly what I'm thinking. Because if he's not you groping, know, I mean, you got to be getting that groping somewhere. you got to be getting it somewhere. I'm only 42. You're not, we're not that old. No. And, but we, <laughs> we, we not, he's he groping like an old man. He, I mean, I'm begging you to grope. <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean, seriously, I'm living through this every day. And there's no groping. No groping. No. I'm in the shower, and I... T I You're sudsing up. I'm, I'm sudsing up, and I'm, I'm intercomming him on the phone. Hey, You're like, come hey, upstairs. Come up there. You know, you know. Um, I'm cooking for the kids. No, come upstairs for a minute. Give me a little something, something. <laughs> <laughs> so what if he, he, uh, he is cheating? If he cheating, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to leave my husband, but I'm going to hurt him. You. <laughs> I'm going to hurt him. What if, what if he says? Because I've been there since diapers. We right. got kids before right. this. Right. When your baby was in diapers, I was there. Right. So what are you saying? Like, if he is cheating, you'd, like, try to work it out? I want to work my marriage yeah. out. Yeah. Let's bring out your husband, Walter. Oh, boy. Right. I'm... I'm tired. No, I'm going to say this before you say a word. All right. You don't look like a cheater. Because <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a cheater. I, I just said you don't you know, look like one. You know, babe, I'm sick of defending myself mm -hmm. for not doing anything. I know. You I, I hear this work. all the time. I go to work and come home. Where do I have the time? You have I the time. I take care of the kids. It don't take but two minutes to do it. <laughs> Walter, um, are you cheating on your wife? No, I'm not. Have you ever? Um, I've done some things that I'm not proud of before we were married. But you, okay? well, but whatever the case, whatever that yeah. happened, you got married, right? Exactly. And, and since you've gotten married, you've been a good husband. Yes, I have. And you've been a faithful husband. Yes, I have. Okay, so, um, and, and she says, you know, the, the woman with the dog stopping in front of your house, nothing going as, on there. As far as this woman with the dog... I never really see this person. Ooh, she Lord is Jesus. the one who always sees this person. You know, once or, once or twice, I cut the grass, and I tell my, my little kid, people walk with their dog down the street. They say hi. We ain't talking about other hi. people. We talking about that's her. That's it. The one thing she does know, you're not groping on her anymore. Uh, sexual activities kind of like, you know, fell off the diving board a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it has. You know, I work a lot, you know, and I come home. I don't care. But see, I don't care. And the folks, like, I'm just saying, I, 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 I don't about care. Two weeks. I got to say this shit. I'm, okay? I'm going to let you have say right. but like, you kind of hit the jackpot of wives. You yeah. got a wife that wants sex all the time. And you're, you're not fooling around. No, I'm not. You took a lie to talk to Oh, us, I right? sure did. So let's find out. You know what? I don't need to know. Oh, you I, don't want to know? No. I don't think my wife's cheating. No. I really don't. Woo. You just, you escaped the big one. No, I want, uh -huh. <laughs> I 
I'm not cheating. Okay. I don't want you nobody really else. You really want me to read these? He just said he doesn't want to hear them. Do you want to hear I trust my wife. So I want her to trust me. Them. That's why I want to hear. You know? I trust my I don't need to hear. I don't need to hear. I'm not cheating. So you don't want me to read them? No. Okay. I don't need I'm them. not going to read them, then. I don't need to hear. I'll read them for you. Since being in a relationship with Walter, have you ever cheated on Walter? You said yes. I mean, you said no. <laughs> she told the truth. Okay. Since being married, have you ever cheated on Walter? She said no. And she told the truth. Um, and then, Walter, you came on, and uh, we had to ask you this. Are you cheating on Shalisa with the woman who walks her dogs in front of your house? <laughs> and, you, and you said, woof, no. <laughs> you said no. And you told the truth? It's got to stop, man. He's not stop. having sex with dog woman. That's good. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. Okay, that's all, dude. I told you. Since being married, have you ever cheated on Shalisa? He said no. He told the truth. He told the truth. I tell you, you've been putting out, you've been doing this for nothing. I told you to do this for nothing. Now, Shalisa, I told you had us ask these next two questions. These aren't questions we normally ask, but you wanted to know, and we asked them for you. Oh, what was it? Do you, <laughs> do you still have romantic feelings for your wife, Shalisa? Oh, God. He answered yes. He told the truth. And what's wrong with you? you you're what is wrong with you? Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> we asked you... Do you have romantic feelings for any other woman but your wife? All right. He said no. He told the truth. Come on. I've been telling you. I've been telling you. I've been I'm not doing it. It has to stop. Um, I mean, the truth of it is, if I'm you, sorry. And maybe if you stop accusing them now, maybe, because it's true, like, if you get beaten now with always being accused of cheating, he's not doing it. Probably is a turn off. Um, and if you stop doing that, he probably is going to grow up you a lot more and do all the other <laughs> we things. Gotta get, we got to get moving. We got to get moving. Now, <laughs> listen, listen. I normally never do this for anybody, but in my green room, I have a shower. I'm going to let you use it. Let's go. <laughs> He's an ordinary 13-year-old boy. I'm told that you kick your mother and sister, right? Yes. You punch them, you're biting your mother. And you know what's more unfortunate about this is that Joey's mother has cancer. And you're saying you do this because of your brother. Throwing his mother around by her hair. Calls your mother a bitch and a whore? Yeah. You say to your own mother, suck my... Why do you act the way you do? Because I think somebody have a knife up to her and everything. Why are you lying? I'm not. Mother's never been beat on. Take this cop out, Gary. Because you want an excuse to beat on her. You're killing her every single day. Tell the truth. I am. She don't have long to live, but you're making it worse on her. We have your mother on the phone. Okay, Steve, this is the truth. I'm told that you choked your mother, you put a knife to her throat, you take her social security checks, I do because I want to get high. It got to be me and you 
I got to be you and the drugs. And she wanted you to make a decision. Drugs or your mother? You haven't seen your mom since that last show. Would you like to see your mom? Yes. Welcome to the show. This young man that you see sitting on my stage is 13 years old. And his name is Joey, right? He's an ordinary 13-year-old boy. And this is what he did to his mother. Bite marks on her leg and arm. Torn up the house. Joey, what are you, uh, what are you doing to your mother? Biting her. Excuse me? Fighting with her. You're biting your mother? Yes. This looks like a pretty, uh, pretty vicious bite mark. It looks like maybe if a dog bit you, that's the kind of bite mark you'd have. Why are you biting your mother and causing that type of injury to your own mother? Because she's holding me down where I can't move. Well, is there a reason why she's holding you down? My brother tries to fight with me. Your brother tries to fight with you. Yes. So your mother's trying to control you. Yes. And you bite her on the arm. I'm told that you, you kick your mother and sister, right? Yeah. Is this true? Yes. You punch them? Yes. You push them down? Yes. And you pull their hair? Yes. Why do you do this, young man? Because of my brother. Because he's a really bad role model. He's a really bad role model. So if you know he's a bad role model, why do you follow your brother? He's not making you do this, right? You're yes. seeing him and you're doing this on your own. Yes. Your brother might have an influence on you, but you're deciding to do this with your own free will. Do you love your mother? Yes. When you look at your mother, when you think about your mother, do you think, I love my mother? Do you think good things about your mom or do you yes. think bad things about I your mom? I think good things. What kind of things? Good things. And you know what's more unfortunate about this is that Joey's mother has cancer. Your mother's very sick, right? Mm hmm I think you're scared, right? Yeah. I'm looking at you. I don't, I don't see somebody who really wants to continue down the path of hurting his mom. Yep. I see, I see, not that it's embarrassing or it's wrong, but I see that you're, you're tearing up mm -hmm. and you must have feelings for your mom. Yeah. And that's good. You should feel should have good feelings about your mom. And you're saying you do this because of your brother. Mm-hmm. And your brother's name is Jerry? Yeah. What are the things that your brother does? He pushes Sheila, which Sheila's is Sheila's your sister? Yes. And he pushes my mom. He hits my mom. I don't hit my mom, but I do bite. Son, when you bite your mom, you're causing pain to your mom. And I don't care whether you're hitting, doing whatever. Did you put that mark on your mother? Yes. Are you ever going to do that again? No. Okay. <laughs> let, let me just ask you one question, Joey. Mm -hmm. Why are you here on my show today? What do you want to happen? For me to be able to quit hitting my mom. Well, if you ever have the urge to hit your mom or do anything crazy, you pick up the phone and you call me and see what I have to say about it, okay? And I'm going to help you okay. not do this anymore. When you're 13 years old, I want you to grow up and be a good guy, mm -hmm. a good guy that people can count on. And you know what? You got it inside you, mm -hmm. all right? <laughs> I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to bring your brother out. I'm going to talk to him, okay? okay? All right, just go right out there, Joey. Let's bring out Joey's older brother, Jerry. How you doing, Jerry? I'm good. Hey, Jerry, do me a favor, all right? Stand up. Thank you. <laughs> Throwing his mother around by her hair. Calls your mother a bitch and a whore? Okay. You say to your own mother, suck my...
You're killing her every single day. I'm told that you choked your mother, you put a knife to her throat. I do because I want to get high. And this is the way you treat your mother. I don't think you feel my rage. You got a little brother Joey here? Yeah. Seems like a good kid. Except that, from what I understand, that I'm looking at a bite mark on your mom, that your brother viciously bit your mother. He abuses your mom, your sister. Your mom has cancer, right? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Not so good. Not so good? Does it bother you that your mom's sick? Kind of. It's terrible that your mom has to suffer physically because of this illness, right? Yeah. This disease? It's so, and it bothers you so much that you hit your mother and your sister, you punch them, you've had I the don't cops. Punch them. You don't punch them? No, I push them and, like, with my hand, I don't ball my fist up. Well, it's nice that you just push your mother with cancer. Had cops called on them, t had the cops called on them twice for domestic violence, right? Yeah. Pushes his mother down so he can leave? Yeah. Throwing his mother around by her hair. I don't throw her by her hair. Well, where do we get that from then? I don't know. It's did probably make, my did, sister. Did we make that up? It's probably my sister. Probably your sister? Call his, calls your mother a bitch and a whore? Yeah. You call your own mother a bitch and a whore? Yeah. And what, what reason would be for that? Is your, let me ask you, is your mother a whore? No. Is your mother a bitch? No. You say to your own mother, the one who has cancer, suck my How do you fix your lips, Jerry, to say that to your own mother? I don't know. You don't know? Look at me. I want an answer. You don't say I don't know when you say something like that to your mother. You better have a damn good reason why you say that to your mother. And I want to know, how dare you say that to a woman who takes care of you, that raises you? The woman that probably cares about you more than anybody else that walks on this planet. If some guy, 16 years old, came up and said that to you, what would you do? Probably be fighting. Probably be fighting. Yeah. So why in the world would you say that to your mother? Because I get mad and... Say stuff. I get mad. I'm right, mad right now. I want you to take your coat off. <laughs> this is a police report of one incident with your mom. It says you not only caused physical harm, you grabbed your mother by the throat in a choking manner and pushing her around the house causing scratches and redness on the throat, chest area. It's a police report. Give me your coat, young man. Give me your coat. Now, you're going to stand there, and you're going to answer questions. You know why you're on my show? Because not because you're a good young man of your community, a man that a mother can be proud of. I have a woman that's so sick she can't even travel here and be on the show, that has to reach out to a stranger, some bald-headed stranger on TV, and ask for help. Because my two sons are abusing me. I live in my home, and I can't feel safe. How bad is that? That a mother can't feel safe in her own home because of her sons. The pain that she had to bear to bring your butt into this world knowing that someday these boys will grow up and cause her harm. Yeah, that makes me mad, and that's why you're on the show. <laughs> Your mom's a single mom, right? Yeah. What causes you to be this, this bad guy to your own mother, Jerry? Because my sister... Eggs it on and... Your sister eggs it on. Yeah. She says, give mom a crack? 
No, she Grab gets in my throat. face and my mom gets in my face and I just go off. You go off. Yeah. Because your mom gets in your face. Guess what? Everybody's mom gets in her face, especially when you're acting like a goofball. And you know what? That's what parents are supposed to do. They're supposed to keep their kids in line. They're supposed to discipline them. And at 16, Jerry, you don't get to call the shots. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Then why don't you act like you know? Don't shrug your shoulders. I know at 16, I was a goof too. But at 16, and your mom's got cancer, and life is hard as it is, and raising you and Joey, do you know what a bad influence you were being on your little brother? This attitude that you got, he looks up at you, and he's acting out the way he is because of you? What? He don't have to look up to He don't me. have to look up to you. Nope. Don't you want him to? Nope. Why not, Jerry? Because. Why are you just letting stupid stuff come out of your mouth right now? <laughs> One of my mom's boyfriends have a knife up to her and everything. <laughs> Why are you lying? I'm not. Mommy's never been beat on. Because you want an excuse to beat on her. Tell the truth. I am. She don't have long to live, but you're making it worse on her. We have your mother on the phone. You don't want the responsibility of being a big brother? No. Nope. Don't you love your brother? I don't know. You don't know if you love your brother? Nope. Why would you say you don't know if you love your brother? That's your flesh and blood. You're going to learn going through life. The one thing that you can count on is your family. Do you think anybody really, really is going to give a damn about you besides your own family? No. Why do you act the way you do? Give me an answer. Don't say I don't know. Because give me an I answer. Do. Why you act the way you I do? Because I do. Because you do. Your mother has cancer. She's asking me for help, and I'm trying to help. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'm helping if I keep getting, I don't know, and I just do. Nobody does, does anything just because they want. There's reasons behind it. And if you want me to help, if you really want me to help you, help your mother, then give me an answer so I can try to help you. We got a video that your sister tried to, she tried to tape your rage. Let's take a look at it. It's a real nice videotape there. Hey, you gonna what? act like that at home and you're gonna try to hide your face on my stage? If you can act like that, you do just what you want to do? Now, how do you have a hard time facing my audience, facing myself? Talk, oh, you're a real tough guy pushing your mom around. The mom with cancer. Oh, you're, you're sick? I don't give a damn. Get out of my way. I'm going to push you down. Who the hell is going to respect you? Can you can't even show the mother that brought you into the world. Your own family. You show no respect to them. Who in the world is ever going to show you respect? You're tough, right? You went to jail, right? Went to jail. Yeah. I hear you're not afraid of policemen, right? You're not afraid of cops. Nope. Were you going to kick some cops' ass? No. Hey, Jerry, do you want to do something with your life? Do you want to do anything except just being a, a disaster at home? Yeah. What do you want to do with your life? Hey, Jerry, look at yet. me. Look at me, honestly. When I say this, I mean it. Yeah. I want you to be somebody. You know what? I want you to do good in your community. I want you to go up to be a successful man. I want you to go home and be a good son to your mother. That's what I want. 
Do you know, I think everybody in this room, nobody's cheering for you to be a punk. Nobody's rooting for you to go down the tubes and end up in jail. We don't want to raise a bunch of idiots in this country that go around abusing their own family. We're not rooting for you to go down the tube, young man. I'm upset right now because I don't want to see a young person throw his life away. I don't like seeing mothers abused by their sons. How about, I don't think I have to sit up here and yell at you and tell you, love your mother. If you saw some guy on the street calling your mother names... That's what I seen. That's why I do to my mom, dude. First of all, you call me Steve. And second of all, if you saw these guys doing this to your mom on the street, it must hurt you, right? No, it's not. It's in the house. Guys come had in a boyfriend. your house? No, my mom had a boyfriend who you know used what? to beat on her. This is, we're getting somewhere. See, this is the problem. That's what I want to hear, Jerry. Not just, I'm doing this. Obviously, this is the cause of the problem. You say men, you see men beat on your mom? Your mom's bringing guys in the house and they're hurting yeah. her? I could see this obviously bothers you. Don't worry about it. It's nothing wrong. Okay, so now I can help you. I can help you now, all right? Tell the truth. I am. I know he's lying. We have your mother on the phone. Okay, Steve, this is the truth. It got to be me and you, I got to be you and the drugs. And she wanted you to make a decision. Drugs or your mother? You haven't seen your mom since that last show. Would you like to see your mom? Yes. It's probably real tough to see your mom get pushed around by a man. When you see this, what are, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? I don't know. It just kills me because I seen somebody, one of my mom's boyfriends, have a knife up to her and everything. Your sister's the one that called the show, right? Yeah. Let's bring her out and hear what she has to say. <laughs> Sheila, how old are you? 19. You're 19? This is your brother? Yeah. Jerry, when your sister has something to say to you, why don't you stand up? It's a good idea when your sister or your mother enters the room, you always stand up. Look at me. Why are you lying? I'm not. Mama has never been beat on. Yes, she has. No, she by has. no nobody ever beat on her. Now, Sheila, let me ask you a question. I, I see a young man. He's very defiant. And then, you know, he breaks down and he says, I, I see a, a man abusing my mother and this is why I did it. And you're coming out. This is your brother. We saw the tape. You shot that tape. And what was your purpose for shooting that tape? To show people, how, show you how he's acting. This is an everyday struggle. I fear living in my house. She feels living in her house. You didn't even lived in the house two a years. long time. Two, two years. years. You, but, you wasn't there enough. when I seen that's it. That's enough to be a prisoner. Okay, a prisoner in my own home when I can't leave. Is it fair to say that maybe you haven't been in two years and maybe he did no, I see know, this happen I to know better. his mother? I know better. My mom tells me everything. I talked to my mom and I was there too. I didn't live there, but I was with her. And she's never, that's never happened. It's a cop out for him. No, that's all. I've it's, seen It's, it's a cop her. out, Jerry. Because you want an excuse to beat on her. You're killing her every single day. And you don't care. When's the last time he hit you? Um, that was a week ago. That's the video I was shooting. When that the, video's from when a week it, yeah, ago. Yeah, when it went blank is when he was punching me. The video went blank because he was punching mm -hmm. you. He's on the couch. Pin down. Did you ever see a knife put to your sister's th throat? No. Why do you beat on her then? Because she gets in my face. So and what? Stuff. So what? Come on, Jerry, give me a better reason than that. Why not walk away? I didn't punch her last time. You could even call my mom and ask her that one. You try. She's Mommy on stage. Is she you. lying? You're a man. She's a woman. And uh, first of all, nobody should be putting her hands on anybody. I don't condone women hitting men. But I certainly don't. Look how big you are. And this is your sister. And you're putting your hands on her. You're beating her. Come on, wake up. Is she lying, Jerry? Did you punch her last week? No, I didn't punch her. You've seen the video. You can even. You were I saw you acting like an animal on that video. I know. 
And you because did. she was recording me. Why? Because you lied. No, I'm not. It has to stop. It has to stop. It, you are. Well, hold on a second. Your 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 younger brother, he's he's seen this, or not seen it. I don't think because I don't think it's well, true. Well, let's bring Joey out and let's ask him too. Joey, you still living at home? Yes. Sheila's been out for a couple of years, right? Yeah. Your brother says that he does this to your mother because one of her boyfriend's no, men that she bring, a brings a knife to his throat? That's a lie. No, no one, none of my, my mom's boyfriends hit her. You've <laughs> never seen your mother get hit by no. a boyfriend? Have you ever seen a knife put to her throat? No. Do you believe that your brother's making this up? Yes. Why do you think your older brother's <laughs> making this up? Because he's finding another way to be like the victim. Another way to be like a victim. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, what I want you to do is I want you to reach down real deep right now and try to be a man and tell the truth. I am telling the truth. Why is your younger brother coming out here and saying you're lying? Probably I mean, he's 13 years like old. Me. He's scared of you. Your sister, she's physically scared of you. Why would they lie, Jerry? Because they don't like me. Oh, why I don't? Why you. I wouldn't like either if you were living in my house acting the way you did on that tape. Mommy loves you. We're trying to make you a better person. Then you don't go out there and be on another woman and get put in prison for the rest of your life or get killed. Or kill somebody. Do you want to see somebody in the body bag? Is that right? You're giving her an early grave. She don't have long to live, but you're making it worse on her. And it has to stop. The lying, I don't know where that's coming from. There's no need to lie. I'm not lying. God, Jerry, you know what? Your mom is dying. And just think, when she's gone, you're never going to get the chance to say, Mom, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Here, your mom's still with us. Why not make the last impressions, the last moments of her life with you good ones, good memories? You punch her where she has seizures. You know, you're hitting in her stomach. You're trying to tear her scar, her scar open from where she had surgery. Does she deserve the abuse? No. And neither do you. I'll stay here all night, but I want you to tell me the truth. I know he's lying. I want to ask you, Maggie, and I, I certainly hope that you will tell me the truth. Okay, Steve, this is the truth. Come here, Joey. Do you really mean what you say up here? Yes, sir. Are you really, am I going to put you back on a plane? Are you really going to go home and change? Yes. No. Are you not going to abuse your mom anymore? Yes. What state do you live in? Columbus, Ohio. Okay. I really hope that you're telling me the truth. I because I, here is my promise to you. If you go back home and I get a phone call from your mother... I will be going to Columbus, Ohio. I want you to shake my hand and promise me that you're going to do everything you can to be a good son to your mother. Mm -hmm. You promise? Yes, sir. All right. Joey, I hope so. I want to do a show somewhere down the road, and I want to hear from your mother and your sister what a great son and brother you are. And I yes, hope sir. that's the case. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay. I want you to leave the stage now. Yes, Good sir. luck to you. <laughs> Jerry? I'll stay here all night, but I want you to tell me the truth. I'm telling I want you, you to truth. tell me the truth, Jerry. I'm telling I, you the truth. You know truth. what? I look at your brother, and I really believe he's telling me the truth. I'm I believe you Sheila. The truth. I believe your sister coming out here. This boyfriend that he's saying has been years ago, maybe seven years ago. So I know he's lying. Uh, you know what? Maybe it did happen. 
Maybe you saw something. No, maybe you saw. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you saw something nobody else saw. Maybe it did happen seven years ago, Jerry. When are you going to decide? You know what? I'm not going to beat up on my sister and my mother anymore. No matter what some man did. Can I promise today that the last time that I hit my sister and my mom be the last time I ever do it again? I would hope. I'd like to believe it. But what's what really is going to make me? Believe that you're going to change, Jerry. I promise. But what makes you decide to change now? Because I don't want to be back on this show. <laughs> I, I don't know if to take that as a good thing or a bad thing. We have your mother on the phone. And what's your mother's name? Maggie. Maggie? Can you hear me, Maggie? Yeah. You wanted me to help you, right? Yes. I want to ask you, Maggie, and I, I certainly hope that you will tell me the truth. Is I will. Your, your son, older son, Jerry, has come on the show, and he said the reason why he abuses you is because he saw a man put a knife to your and, and beat and hit you. Okay, Steve, this is the truth. The guy did throw a knife to my chest, but the kids were asleep. And this was like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And the kids did not see it. They've overheard me saying it. And, and I left him because of it. Is it possible that maybe he woke up and he walked in and he saw it and you didn't see him and he I'm went back to bed? I'm not going to say it couldn't be possible. I'm not going to say that. But I'm, I'm saying to my knowledge, I never seen the kids. Nobody was even up. It was just Maggie. Me. That's my point, though. He's a nine-year-old kid. Maybe I woke but up, that, went to the bathroom. But at that time, they were little, little, and they. Well, <laughs> Maggie, he's he's nine know. years. He's nine years old at the time. Something like that. Well, he's old enough to see if somebody put a knife to his mother's chest. I think that was. He didn't put a knife to my yeah. chest, and I'm not taking up for the guy. I'm telling you what happened. He threw a knife he at came your in chest. And he he threw the knife at my chest, and I told him to get out. If your son did say, wouldn't you say that would be a traumatic incident to your son? Yes. Did you ever tell your mom that you saw this? No, no. I just kept it in my head. You know what, Maggie? I'm yeah. really I'm really sorry to hear about your illness. Okay. And, Thank you. And, and I'm going to try to do everything I can to help you with your two sons, okay? Thank you, Steve. Good luck to you. Steve. Sheila, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say thanks for being on the show. Thanks for coming here. If it happens in the future that either one of your brothers touches your mom, you call me, and I'm going to come to Columbus, Ohio, okay? I will be there at your doorstep. Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> Jerry, I... When you said it, I believed you, but then I had to question it because your sister and your brother were saying, that's not true. Hey, somebody's a commotion's happening in your house when you're a little kid, you hear your mom yelling. I think it's possible that you woke up and you walked in and you were scared and you went back to bed. I believe that, and I want to give you the benefit of the doubt, and I believe that you saw that. Jerry, when are you going to say, you know what, I'm not going to let anybody abuse my family. I saw that. It hurt me so bad. I'm going to protect my family from now on. I'm not hitting my mom no more. And I don't want to, you know what, Jerry? I don't want the reason being because you don't want to be on this show no, anymore. It's just because I don't want to see my mom dead. That's a good reason. How about not hitting your sister? I'm not going to hit my sister because, like, because she's my family and stuff like that. And I don't want to see her end up dead either. How about you just want your family to be around you? I want it to be a right family, not not uh, being scared and stuff. I think that's what we all want, Jerry. We all, everybody wants is a home where you can go to and you don't have to be scared of your brother. You don't have to be scared of your son. We want you to go home. and I don't want to come to Columbus, Ohio to straighten you out. But I will, if your mom picks up the phone, if Sheila picks to. up the phone, 
I hope I don't have to. You know what? I want you to come back and be a guest on an update show, and I want your mom to say, Steve, my boys came back, and they've been good sons. I want Sheila to come back on the show and say, Steve, my brother, you wouldn't believe it. He's That'll a good happen. guy now. He protects us. Is that going to happen, Jerry? Yes, I promise. You promise? Yes. Look into that camera and tell everybody back home, when I get home, Mom, yeah. I love you, and I'm going to be a good son. When I get back home, I'm going to love my mom and not hit them no more, and I promise that I won't. You're promising that to the whole country? Yeah, I promise. All right. We shall see. Let's go. It got to be me and you. I got to be you and the drugs. And she wanted you to make a decision. Drugs or your mother? You haven't seen your mom since that last show. Would you like to see your mom? I have a lot of guests on my show, Extreme Stories. And I gotta say, honestly, young man, I remember you because of the extreme that you went to hurt your own sick mother. Let's take a look at the clip. I'm told that you choked your mother, you put a knife to her throat, you pushed her down to the ground, you punched her on her chest and stomach, you take her social security checks, and you wrote checks in your dead grandfather's name. Yes. Is this true? Yes, it's true. Okay. So, let's say you stand up while I ask you questions on why this happened. I do because I want to get high. And I know that she had the money. That I may hurt her, I may kill her, but I mean, after I get high, the feeling is gone. And you're still shocked that she put you in prison? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe she felt scared, Ken. Maybe she thought, you know, the next time you put the knife, maybe you'll actually slash her throat. And, you know, it's like that prayer. As a mother, you don't see, when you walk with your children and stuff, you don't see one footprint in the sand. You see two. Because you are there that when your child falls, you are there to catch them, hold them up, and say, we can go on. Do you, do you know, ma'am, everything that just came out of your mouth, I should print on a board, and we should put that on stage because it's the best thing any mother's ever said on my stage. Kendra, I want you to get right, to do right. It's to the point now, Kendra, it can't be the three of us anymore. It got to be me and you, or it got to be you and the drugs. I can't take it. Do you know how much rage I have in me right now? Yeah. I stand here... And I see a man who said, one of the best mothers I've ever ran across, and this is the way you treat your mother. I don't think you feel my rage. I don't think you know how I feel right now. You do have one of the best mothers I ever met who loves her son. After everything that she's been through, she came here and she wanted you to make a decision. Drugs or your mother? And the good thing is, Kendrick, you picked your mother. Yes. <laughs> Kendrick graduated from rehab. Yes. He went. I understand not only did you do 28 days, the normal stay for rehab, but you took an additional month to make sure that you would never harm your mother again. Yes. How do you feel? Today I feel good. I mean, wherever I got out of jail, it's not. When I got out of jail, I was clean, but I don't feel like I feel today. Today I feel just reborn. My whole life just turned around. And what is the difference between coming out of jail and coming out of rehab? Now I understand that I have a disease. And back then, I had no choice but to use. But now I have a choice to use, uh, use the tools that I learned from ABT to stay clean. Looking back, seeing the, the clip when you were on the show previously, you see how you treated your mother. How, how do you feel? 
I feel bad about it, but I have to. In order for me to continue on staying strong in my recovery, I have to let that go because what's going to happen if I keep that inside, it's going to make me want to go back and use and pick up, and I can't afford to do that. That's, that's great to hear. And the great thing about this, Kendrick was the one to call the show and ask for help. How do you feel about being sober? How, do you, how does it feel to be sober? It feels good. I mean, it feels different. At least I know that and I would no longer hurt my mom. You haven't seen your mother since the last time you were on the show? No, I talked to her on the phone, but I hadn't seen her. What, do you, what would you like to say to your mom? Um, I'm sorry for everything I did, and I love you. You haven't seen your mom since that last show. Would you like to see your mom? Yes. And your mom, she's backstage. She has been watching. She hasn't seen you in two months. Let's bring her out. How do you feel about Kendrick's recovery? I feel great. He looks good. And from the time that I talked to him from time to time, I could tell in his, his voice through the progress, that through his voice, that um, through the steps, that he was making progress. And it was priceless to me. And I was so happy. And I owe it all to you and God. And I owe it to my son because he had the initiative to call the show and want to have the mind to he change. He wanted to change He himself. wanted to change. Now, he said an important thing when he was sitting here that even though he feels bad about what happened, he has to let that go so he can continue on with his recovery. Can you look at your son and look into his eyes and say, I forgive you? Kendrick, baby. Mama forgive you. You don't have to go back and you don't have to think. Let it go. Put it in the Lord's hand. Turn it loose. I forgive you from the bottom of my heart because what you did to me, it was you did it, but it wasn't you. We can start a new life and we can be happy together. Just let it go. I got what I want is priceless. I got my son back. That's all I ever want. And I, I wanted to say, and I really mean this from the bottom of my heart, you are one of the most incredible mothers I've ever met. When she's, the things that she said about everything for your children, you are somebody that I look up to, and I hope that I'm half the father that you are as a mother. Thank you. And it's only possible because we have a, a, such a great work in relationship with A Better Tomorrow, and we have Jim Fent. Come on up, Jim. <laughs> it's really, the only way we're even possibly to do this is because of your group, you coming out here. Jim takes the people that we send to rehab, comes out to Chicago, flies them all to Chicago, escorts them, and makes sure they get the treatment they get. So I want to say thank you to Jim. Thank you. You have something for Kendrick? I do. I have this uh, certificate of completion for 60 days, and I'd like to say we wish every client was like him. He, he's not the man. We never knew the man that, that you showed on the video earlier. Without the drugs in his system, he's a great guy. 
He did the chores we asked him to do. He did the hard work and counseling and therapy we asked him to do. He asked to stay longer. He said, help me find a job. He was a, a model client and a great guy. You should be very proud of him. I want to give this to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You ready? There you go, Bob. This obviously is the most horrific show we can do. Death of a child. You failed him. You failed him. I believe that her boyfriend beat him to death. Did you know about the abuse? No, he had a couple of bumps and bruises. We're talking about lacerations, black eyes, bruises on face, buttocks, and around the ankles. You knew. You knew. Why are you sitting here still lying? How long did you know your boyfriend? I knew him for six months. She covered up for him. What, what was you thinking? My little dude, go. Go. I had nothing to do with what happened to my son. You never knew that your son suffered those type of injuries? No, I never knew that. Four broken ribs on a five-month-old and a broken arm. He almost died at the hospital. Diane and Ed really believe you have something to do with this. He was a five-month-old baby that got hurt. You're not showing any emotion. You damn well better be in this. Good, because I am. I know I am. She is my wife. I know she didn't shake him. She was with somebody that did shake a baby. If I give my child to someone and they cause harm to my child, I'm going to hold myself responsible. If you fail this damn thing, you're done. On October 19th, 2011, a four-year-old boy was allegedly beaten to death by his mother's boyfriend. A preliminary autopsy report states that the boy suffered a brain hemorrhage caused by blunt force trauma to the head. Although the mother was at work when the alleged murder occurred, her family believes that she knew her boyfriend was abusing her son. This is what the child's mother had to say. My son was happy, very active, playful. He loved cars, and he would put a smile on anybody's face. Three weeks ago, my son passed away by the hands of someone I thought I trusted. My child's only four years old. I was at work, and I got a phone call from that person. He told me that my son was unresponsive, and I rushed home. I called 911. Uh, one, one, you know. My son is unresponsive. <laughs> I've already got help on the way, okay? But I need to know if he's breathing. I think he is. Okay. At the hospital, I thought that he had passed away due to his medical issues. I found out that he died from blood force trauma to the head. By me being scared of that person, I lied and I told him the ambulance that I was the one that found him that way. I love my son with all my heart. My son was my everything. And now that my family is accusing me of holding something back, that just tears me up more inside. They still seem like they don't believe me. My son hasn't been buried yet. And these accusations just keep adding on more and more pressure to me. I told the police everything that I know and cooperate with them to the best of my ability. I just want my sisters to believe me that I had nothing to do with this. I just want justice to be served for my son because he didn't deserve this. And he was taken away at the hands of a monster. How did you find out that your nephew passed? I got a phone call on the 19th at like 10.30 that morning. I was asleep, and the nurse from the hospital called me because she's in the background, she's hollering, whatever. And I'm like, okay. The nurse is like, well, I, Tequita told me to call you and let you know that they brought your nephew into the hospital last night and he died because he died in his sleep. I'm like, what the hell? Hi, wait, first of all, he's four years old. What do y'all mean y'all couldn't resuscitate a four-year-old? I don't understand that. And so when she finally got calm enough to talk to me, she was like, oh, they came to her and told her that he died from respiratory failure. Lie number one. Then I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I'm coming. I'm coming. I just hung up the phone. I'm coming. Call my mom, watch my kids. I'm going. Bam. I left with $69 in my account to drive 12 hours. Overdraft my account twice to get to her. And the whole entire time I'm driving, I'm talking to her periodically. She's still telling me different stories. It's like, oh, 
Then someone called me and was like, girl, you know, the crime scene is at her house. I'm like, why the crime scene is at her house? He just died from natural causes. So why are they there? She told me that he had, he had asthma, he had a heart murmur. She told me when I spoke with her that he died of, he had an asthma attack in his sleep. So why was the crime scene investigators there? He had hemorrhages uh, to both eyes, bruises on face, buttocks, and around the ankles, abrasions on his chest, forehead, and on his left eye, laceration on his right ear, a busted lower lip, a bite mark on his arm. Uh, September 30th, a social worker noticed a mark under his eye and healing marks on his forehead, neck, and rib cage. Um, it's a lot of injuries for a four-year-old little boy. And it's a lot of marks for you not to pay attention. My question is, when do you go beige your child? When do you watch your child? When do you look at your child? When do you question your child? That's the thing. What do you think happened? What I think happened, she knows what's happening. She protected herself because if you didn't, you, she protected him. She covered up for him. She put herself in the story when the police have on camera that she was running back to the apartment building. You believe that her boyfriend beat your nephew to death? I believe that her boyfriend beat him to death. How has she been acting since uh, her son's death? She's been basically in a little party mode, like I'm free. Like, first of all, if it was me, if it was me and my kids, I couldn't be sitting here talking to you. I ain't got that kind of time. My mind is still focused on my child and what happened three weeks ago. I ain't ready to party. When you say she's in party mode, what is, what is exactly does We that went mean? to a little house party or whatever, and it was just a house party. And she got all dressed up. Understand, you know what I'm saying? You want to look good because you don't want nobody talking about you. But then in the same breath, you at this party, you dancing and all this, all of that. Take pictures, putting on Facebook. Oh, sexy as always. Oh, I'm getting my birthdays in two weeks, and I'm going to throw a party. First and foremost, he ain't even in the ground yet. Why you want to throw a party? Your nephew's not even He's a heen in the ground. He's still at the funeral home waiting on somebody to give him some money to bury him. That's just that. Did you know about the abuse? No, he had a couple of bumps and bruises. We're talking about lacerations, black eyes. My little dude, go! Go! I had nothing to do with what happened to my son. Did you know about the abuse? No, he had a couple of bumps and bruises. We're talking about lacerations, black eyes. The boyfriend is in jail, currently awaiting a trial charged with first degree murder and felony child abuse. I think he should get electrocuted, injected, whatever the hell else need to happen. If they want to do it to her, they can do it to her too. Um, Now, your sister took a lie detector test before the show. Um, if she passes, if she fails. If she passes, I'll apologize. I'll be warm enough to apologize to you for any thoughts that I had in my head. You, you cleared it. But if you fail, that shows how bad of a mother you was, that this dude was more important than you protecting your child. Her name is Dequita. Let's bring out Dequita. First off, I want to know, how could you sit here and say, I've been in party mode? You was in party mode. I've you been ain't in, in party, party mode. mode. How have you been and have you not been in party mode? Please what tell have me, I... have you not been in party mode? I you on Facebook no party planning mode. parties. I'm not you on no Facebook party. planning parties. Why do I have to remind you that this is important? Why do I have to remind this you? This is important. Obviously, it's not, sweetie. Day one. It's not. How let has me, it? Let me ask her. Um, your son was being horrifically abused, right? Yes. Um, did you know about the abuse? No, he had a couple of bumps and bruises. And when I asked him about it, well, I was wait till we were alone. Well, it's not a couple bumps and bruises. It's not a couple bumps and bruises. We're talking about lacerations, black eyes, um, abrasions, he didn't get lacerations. Those to the day of his death, when he got the black one eye. of the lacerations on his eye was in healing mode, so he didn't get that on the day that of his death. That was the one he told he me. He didn't get that on the day of his death. Um, he did told you, me. Did you abuse your son? No, never. You didn't abuse him. Uh, tell me, did you find your son? No, I didn't. What, what I was happened? at work, and he caught me. Your boyfriend? Mm-hmm. And what did he say to you? He was like, he left to go get something to drink, and when he came back, that's how he found my son. How did he find him? He told me he found him laying in the bed on his stomach, and he said he told him to get up and go get in the shower. And he said my son didn't respond to him, so he turned him over, and my son was biting on his bottom lip. So he said he just started panicking, and then he caught me. 
And and obviously, do you, is that a story that you believe or? Hell yeah, she believed hold on, hold on, hold on. it. Hold on. At the time, I believed it, but I don't no more. What happened then? Then, I, as soon as I got home, I called the ambulance, and they came and got him. And he was standing right there, telling me what to say to them over the phone. Why did he need to tell you what to say? I don't know why he told me what to say. You don't know but why? Because I was afraid of him. I said what he told me to say. Your boyfriend's a violent criminal. Did you know of any criminal background with him? He, I knew that he had been in prison for selling drugs. How long did you know your boyfriend? I knew him for six months. And at some point, you did change your story that you told to the police, right? Yes. And why did you do that? Because I realized there's no need for me to put myself in it. I might as well tell them the truth and let them know what really happened because they already know that I wasn't there. Why did you tell your sister that your son died of asthma? Because that's what the paramedic told me. They he can't said, declare your baby dead. They got to wait on a doctor to declare your baby dead. We went to medical school. We know that. What are you here today to prove? That I had nothing to do with what happened to my son. And if I knew what was going on to him, I would have got out of that situation. Obviously, there's going to be a big trial, and you're going to get your chance to testify in court. That's if they don't press charges on her, because that's what they want to do. Um... <laughs> your other sister, Yolanda's here. Let's bring her out. Why are you sitting here still lying? Why? I'm not you lying. knew. You knew. You. How would you not know all them bruises? How could you not know? He only had three bruises. Did you not the, ever? Did you not ever give him a bath? No. Did you not you, ever give that him a bath? bath himself. Still, he's four. He's not gonna do it good. What, what was you thinking? No, you just wasn't. You wasn't thinking. You was not thinking. You failed him. You failed him. I know I did. I blame myself for that. Him. You should. I blame myself you for that every day. Do you know you what I feel like doing to myself? Him out of this. You could have got him out of this. You was too busy trying to protect dude. When you was going to put him first? When was you going to put him first? <laughs> Took a lie detector test and we asked you. Prior to your son's death, did you have knowledge that he was being physically abused? You answered no. You never knew that your son suffered those type of injuries? No, I never knew that. Diane and Ed really believe you have something to do with this. We took a lie detector test and we asked you, prior to your son's death, did you have knowledge that he was being physically abused? You answered no. I have grandkids myself, and it's not a day go by that I'm not going to try to... I'm going to protect them, not try. If he hits you, if he, if he hits you, because if he was doing that, then you should have been by long, long ago. Long ago. It should have never got to the point where he was putting his hands on that. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. But it is. It's too late now. Because he's but sitting not in the too late for you. cold right now. You can't hold him. You can't touch him. I ain't going to hear TT. I love you. My baby ain't going to play with him. I ain't going to hear nothing. My baby asks about this baby every day. When I fix my kids' food, I still fix three places. I'm so used to him being with you. And he ain't with you. I put it on Facebook. On my way back to Miami, mad because I ain't got my nephew in the car. That hurt me. And that was the hardest that thing to see y'all pull up at the house. I was there with you when you had not him. see him get out the car. I hadn't already opened my door to you. I opened my door to you because I knew things wasn't right. But you want to tell Big Sis it is. Everything cool. It's all good. It ain't all good. I it ain't understand. all good. My little dude, gone. Yeah, no, gone. I got to understand with people. That I got to hurt. Understand I got to that. Depending on people. I understand I that. I wanted to be a woman and take care of my child on my and own. And you done something that I wasn't woman enough to ever do was get up and leave my family. But you uh, still Yolanda, had a chance you, to get out. You called the show. What do you hope happens today? I honestly hope that. She don't know. She didn't know. 
I um, hope she didn't know. This is, this obviously is the most horrific show we can do. Death of a child. Of a four-year-old innocent child. Of a four-year-old innocent child. And even though you didn't brutally beat your child, you didn't do this, you failed your child, you know that. Miserably. Um, you made bad decisions all along. And as much as I would love to blast you off the stage, I'm not going to do it because you lost your son. I don't know what this lie detector test, I don't know what we asked you. And the very minimum is that you're guilty of not protecting your son. And as far as punishment goes in this case, that's for the courts to decide. Mm -hmm. We obviously know one person's facing trial. You took a lie detector test and we asked you, oh. prior to your son's death, did you have knowledge that he was being physically abused? You answered no. You told the truth. Other than spanking, have you ever witnessed a person charged with his death physically abuse your son with excessive force? You answered no. You told the truth. Did you have any prior knowledge that your boyfriend was so violent? You answered no. You told the truth. I told you that. Have you ever abused? I told you that. Have you ever abused your son using excessive force? You answered no. Abused my baby. You told the truth. I never thought you did. Did you cause any of the injuries that caused your son's death? You answered no. You told the truth. Thank you. Are you now covering up any details of what happened to your son to protect the person who allegedly caused his death? You answered no. You told the truth. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize. I told you I didn't do that to my baby. I apologize. Like I said, if it came back and told the truth to everything, I would apologize. Y'all know it was hard for me to have kids. Now we gotta go back home and, and plan a funeral. Finish planning the funeral because he's been sitting there for three weeks. Wow. Come um, on, man. What I would what this? I would hope from for this point on is that uh, what other when the case does come forward, that you be completely honest um, for your son's sake that whoever is responsible for this does, uh, that your son gets some measure of justice and somebody pays for what they did to your son. I would I hope, hope that, they inject him um, three ways. I want to thank you women for coming on the show. Thank this you obviously for has us. to be an extremely hard thing to come on and talk about. It's, it's a pain that I got to imagine when you lose a child, it never goes away. Uh, it's a deep wound that never heals. You haven't been able to afford uh, to bury your son. Um, the show, we're going to send a check to the funeral home and, and have Thank you. your Thank son, you. your nephew. Thank you. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck, and I hope with time that. Everything heals, and we can get over this, but it takes time. You got to take it one day at a time. That's just that. It's well, going to take time. I, I hope this helps you, the show. I hope you got the answers that you wanted. Yes, yes I did. Uh, unfortunately, I did. it doesn't bring a little boy back. It does. Not. But um, you wanted answers, and we hopefully we got that for you. you Thank good you. luck to you. Thank you. You never knew that your son suffered those type of injuries? No, I never knew that. Diane and Ed really believe you had something to do with this. You damn well better be innocent. Good, because I am. I know I am. Good. My show today is a terrifying story of child abuse. Diane and Ed need to know exactly what happened to their two-year-old son. When he was five months old, he was abused and shaken. He suffered from four broken ribs, two hemorrhages in his brain and a broken arm. He nearly died twice. A man awaits sentencing after pleading guilty to this abuse, but the question is, did the boy's mother, Tanya, have anything to do with it? Let's take a look. 
I'm raising Tanya's baby because of all the abuse that this child's gone through. He already had a struggle in life. He was one pound, nine ounces and he was in the hospital the first five months of his life. I was told that it could have been because of the drugs that possibly was taken while she carried the baby. The night that our son was abused, she called me up about midnight and she said, something's wrong with our baby. And I said, oh my God, he's got a high fever, he's shaking all over, this is seizing. She did not even go to the hospital with us to find out if he was okay, she stayed home because some gentleman was more important than her child. And she kept texting me saying, oh my God, it's my fault, it's my fault. And I said, what are you talking about? And she says, well, I dropped him on his head. He almost died at the hospital and they told us to come in and make our peace with him that he wouldn't be pulling through the night because of the abuse that was allowed to happen to him. And he's had four broken ribs, a broken arm, two brain bleeds. He almost died several times. I don't ever want his biological mom to ever be alone with him because we don't know what she actually done to him. And I'm sorry to say it, but if she done stuff, she'll never see him. And thank God that we've got custody of him because now he'll never be hurt again. Your son had medical conditions when he was born. Uh, tell me about that. He was premature. He had male and female parts. He had GERD, which is where he aspirates and can't breathe well. He had choke on his formula, and they even had to intubate him quite a few times. I mean, he had breathing problems even from the get-go because he was 10 weeks premature, and so he fought for his life since day one. Diane and Ed believe that this is because of drug usage during your pregnancy. I just recently found out that they have. That they, that they believe that it is because and, of that. And is, did you take drugs no. while you were pregnant? You didn't take any drugs? No. What happened the day your son got abused? I was at the doctor's and I had my watching him. And I come home to my son being cranky, him having a limp arm. And I was like, you know, what happened? Four broken ribs. Yeah. Uh, how old is your son, by the way? Now? Yes. He's 25 months old. He's 25 months old. Yes. And when did this occur? How old was he when this occurred? When he, he was five months old. When he was five occurred. months old. Yeah. Uh, four broken ribs and a broken arm to a baby. Yeah. How did that happen? All I know is I was told that he had been shaken, and that's how it happened. I had never touched my son or... Anything like that, even though I've been accused of it. And, and you had no knowledge that your son was being abused in such a way? I never knew until I went to the cop station after the hospital. You never knew that your son suffered those type of injuries? No, I never knew that. You never heard your son wailing away, screaming? No, he never screamed like that until the day, last day there that he was shaken. What, what happened that day? He's crying and... I was wondering why, and then he started acting like his arm was limp, and I got a hold of the doctors, and I was told to come in the next day, even. And then you later on that the night, next day? that's what I was told to do, and I was didn't know what to do. I mean, but, I got well, a hold but of. But how his, could a doctor diagnose a baby? He doesn't know. When he say, I mean, this is this this isn't a cold. This isn't a scratch. This is a four broken ribs on a five month old and a broken arm. Yeah, I know. I know, and I know your child was born with medical problems, but I, if, if I broke my rib, I'd be crying like a baby. You know what yeah. I mean? Be screaming. Bro a broken rib? A broken arm? I didn't even know he had the blood clots on his brain, the broken rib. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. How would you know? Unless there was severe bruising, right? Right. So he, then you took him to the hospital. Yeah. You rolled down to, to the, In who the called ambulance. the ambulance? I ended. Okay, so you went to the hospital, and how long was he in the hospital for? He was down there for quite a while because they had to check him out. They found out about the blood clots in his brain, the broken ribs, and the broken arm, and everything right there. And then I found out down there from child when you protective found services. Out all that, when you found out the extent of your son's injuries. I started bawling my eyes out. I'm like, how did this happen? You really I mean, didn't know? No. So you had no idea how he suffered broken ribs, 
brain hemorrhage, and a broken arm. You had no idea. Not at the time. He was a five-month-old baby that got hurt. You're not showing any emotion. She was with somebody that did shake a baby. If I give my child to someone and they cause harm to my child, I'm going to hold myself responsible. Now, Diane and Ed really believe you have something to do with this. I know this. And why do you think they believe that? Because of things that have been told to them. And what was told to them? It's just hearsay, but I've heard that I got accused right away that it was me that had actually done it, and people were sticking up for me and saying they did it instead. So they want to come here today to prove if I did it or not. Did you drop your baby on his head? No, I didn't drop him on his head. I, he fell out of my arms on his side on top of a diaper bag. Okay. Now, Diane and Ed also claimed that when he was in the hospital, you were rarely there. I was there at first, then I got sick, and the hospital sent me home. And then I couldn't get back up because of transportation. How long was your son in the hospital for? Total? Yeah. He was in the hospital from the time he was born for like four or five months. Well, from and the then, time of the injuries, how long was he in the hospital for? He wasn't even in the hospital two months. While he was in the hospital, how many times did you go visit your son? I was up there the whole time he was first in there, that second half in March when he was up Let in there. Let me be perfect. You home. know what? I, I see what you're trying to do, and I'll be very specific. After your son was admitted into the hospital for broken ribs, a broken arm, brain hemorrhages, during that time he was admitted, during that time, how often did you see your son? I was up there for probably the first three weeks. And then the next three weeks, not so much? No, I couldn't get up there. Why couldn't you? I didn't have no transportation or no money to get up there. I don't have a job. Why don't you uh, have your son now? I got uh, charged because of me, him falling out of my arm and falling on top of the diaper bag because I didn't go down for his therapy that he has to have now. How would they know he fell out of your arms onto a diaper bag? Because the cops asked me, and I told them. Um, we're going to bring out your ex-husband, Ed. Where the hell is the emotion on this, Tanya? There is emotion. Where? Why have you accused me for a year and a half? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, for what? I have proved my innocence the whole time. We're talking about our kid. I know. There was no issues. You should know, too, prior to when we had our other son that there was nothing I did to hurt him. So well, I'm going to let I you know this right him? now to your face. If you fail this damn thing, you're done. I'm not. You're done. I'm not. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's I'm telling you. Today is to prove my innocence so I can have my son back in my life. And you damn well better be innocent. Good, because I am. That. I know I am. Good. You and then when I am, you guys can stop accusing me. And the your, your, girl, your girlfriend, um, and her name is? Diane. Diane, let's bring her out. <laughs> it hurts the hell out of me to sit out there and watch you sit here. Now the damn tears coming out of your eyes, Daniel. What the hell is I, wrong with you? He I was a five-month-old baby yeah, that got hurt. You're not showing any emotion whatsoever. It's because I'm here. No, also it's not to because you're here. Innocence. And the thing is, you did, you did call me when it, you, he got hurt. You called me and you said, you need to come to the house. Something's wrong with our baby. I have opened my house for you. I know I've you offered have. you to come down and sleep in my house. I know you And have. put a crib in that room so you can get to know your son. Where were you? What went wrong? What do you mean? What went wrong? Yeah, what? I, I walked to hell and back for like, my kids. I have I know, five other children. I know, but I told you that. I appreciate and my children you stayed at home and they lost out on their mom because I was taking care of your son. And you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world because I love him. And I it'll know. be a cold day in hell before anybody takes that child from mine. He's oh, mine now. I know. I know. <laughs> Prove my innocence and everything comes out. It's not it... proving your innocence. Where's the emotion? Diane, uh, the night that the baby was injured, why don't you tell me about that? Um, 
she was going to the doctors, and I asked her, I said, Tanya, can I take the baby? And she, at that point, she didn't want us taking the baby because it wasn't proven that Ed was the father. And so we had agreed that because Ed and I was together, the baby could call me mommy and her mommy too. And so we went on. He came home. He was fussy. She did text me once, I think, and said she was going to give him Tylenol because he wasn't feeling good. And I said, keep me informed. Later that evening, she called me. It was about midnight. I woke up from the phone. I said, oh, my God, something's wrong. And she says, something's wrong with our baby. You need to come over immediately. He is my wife. I know she didn't shake him. She was with somebody that did shake a baby. If I give my child to someone and they cause harm to my child, I'm going to hold myself responsible. If I give my child to someone and they cause harm to my child, I'm going to hold myself responsible. I knew that baby was seasoned. He was shaking all over. He was he had a Malty. fever of 104. He had a fever of 104. 104. In fact, she told Tanya. And what did you do at that point? I called an ambulance the minute I walked in the house. <laughs> Do you believe she had something to do with the abuse? I, at this point, I don't know because everything we do is an excuse. Even if she passes this lie detector test, which to me, I don't give a damn if she's innocent or guilty on this lie detector test because I wouldn't trust you with a frog. That's your opinion. He's not your child. You're right. He's not my child. And thank God he's with you. And with us, he'll stay. So I, my point is, I'm asking you, does this lie detector make a difference? Because she's here to prove that she didn't cause the abuse. But in my world, in my brain, she's responsible to a certain point. You know? It ain't just today. I've been trying to prove my innocence for a year and a half. You actually got another guy to date, yeah? So let's bring him out. That's my husband. Whatever. <laughs> I don't care what you, you, or any other in this room says. Stop. I don't care. She is my wife. I have a daughter with her. She takes care of my daughter. She watches her. She takes, no matter how hard or what happens, I don't care how hard she screams, she's there. Listen, this is your wife, and, you know, you should stick up for her. That's what husbands do. Um, no, it's more than that. I know she didn't shake him. Well, maybe she didn't. And, I, and I'll give you that much. I'm not saying she shook that baby. But what I do find odd is that, you know, she was with somebody that did shake a baby, that, you know, did cause incredible damage to a child. That's like saying that's, you're you responsible know what? for someone murdering someone. How are you responsible for them? You know what? If she I give my there. child to someone and they cause harm to my child, I'm going to hold myself responsible. <laughs> Your child was in the hospital with terrible injuries. Yeah, fighting for his life. Fighting for his life, and you couldn't get a ride to the hospital. I couldn't. Everybody don't believe me that I couldn't, but I could not get a ride. And, I and, tried. And just, I got a hold of uh, Please show me the braces on your legs. The braces for or what? Or the wheelchair that you were in. <laughs> Show me those. I couldn't those. get up there. Why? Were your legs broken? No. Well, then why not? I had two other children at home. I also had to And nobody sure else would watch watched. those? No. Nobody. I didn't have nobody to watch my 17-year-old. I could have left my 12-year-old with them. 17-year-old? Yeah. The 17-year-old couldn't watch the younger children? He wasn't 17 at the time. Your daughter, who's 19 years old, I uh, understand she's been trying to go through college, but she's taking time out of her schedule to go through some training so she could take care of your son. Is that correct? Let's meet your daughter. Tanya, you have to stop. You have stop to stop what? making excuses. You need to go... It's a bottom line. He needs you there. 
Why have you found her spot? To come and down. you need to stop telling her she can't go. I don't the tell baby. her that That's she can't obnoxious. stop go. I'm about tired of you I telling her care. that she cannot I do go not see tell her baby. Her that. that is ridiculous. She sees your baby every day. Why can't she go see her son? I don't tell her she can't And why can't see you get son. on the bus whether he tells you to or not? You expect Even if you to walk you can't go see the You can have how do you yeah. expect her to walk four blocks yeah, to a bus station bus. with a four-month-old baby? Keep your son or oh, your daughter. I was you're right there. You're time. right. You oh, baby. Oh, I've had other no, I've had your other. son. You what? He's right. Mm. How do you expect her to walk four blocks with the baby? That's impossible. A stroller? In cold weather. You expect her to take oh, her out there. And it was even he after my season. You, you know what? You are a perfect couple because you're both have an excuse for everything. No, you know what? You know, that's, you know what? And this is a good lesson for you. Your kids will suffer. Your kids will go through hard times because they have parents that make excuses. <laughs> um, Tanya, you're here today because you want to claim your innocence, prove your innocence, and you took a lie detector test. And I wanted to come and talk about my son and everything that happened to him. You did. We all know about the injuries. We all know about his medical problems. We all know about his lengthy stay in the hospital. We know about all those things. We know that he was viciously um, attacked, uh, shaken. He was, uh, you know, almost killed by somebody who has no appreciation of a baby, no love for a child. Anybody that would do that to me, this should just burn in hell forever. Um, I agree. But all I can say now is thank God that that little boy is in a good home now. Um, Obviously, there's nothing wrong with my home if I can have my other three children living with me. Tanya, you took a lie detector test, and we asked you. Did you do drugs while you were pregnant with your son? You said no. She told the truth. Thank you. Have you ever physically... Oh, you're welcome. Have you ever physically abused your son? No. Told the truth. Were you involved in any way with the abuse that caused your son to go to the hospital? No. You told the truth. Were you present when your son received any of the injuries that sent him to the hospital? You answered no. You told the truth. Did you allow anyone to abuse your son? You answered no. And you told the truth. Thank you. You're welcome. Now... You can get the hell off my stage. <laughs> One thing is, I would guess that this lie detector test does give you some comfort knowing that she wasn't directly responsible. Um, I don't know if I would ever leave her alone with your child. I think. I don't have to tell you that. I think you know She'll that, never right? Be alone right. with our child. Um, thank God. I, I hope this helps you in some way. Take care of that little boy. Um, and I know you'll, you'll never let her do damage to that little boy again. Thank you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Good luck. 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 Coming up, we have new information about the man charged with the violent abuse of this child. A verdict has been reached. Stay tuned. The man charged with the abuse of this child recently stood trial and a verdict was reached. Take a look. 22-year-old Bradford was previously convicted of reckless assault of a child. Authorities say took the five-month-old child in February in court tearfully apologized and said he didn't realize what he was doing. He'll serve five years in state prison. I'm so glad justice was served, and hopefully this child will now have a safe and happy life.
you're pregnant. Yes, I am. He thinks it may be his brother's child. That's insane. He's young. He's 18 years old, bro. Any female that's seduced him can have sex. You've done things to try to catch her. Gee. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Left it on my tape recorder. But then he gets the recording and comes back and tells me, well, I can hear you giving oral sex in the background. I know there's nothing there. I haven't done you're, anything. So you're not sleeping with his brother? No, I'm not sleeping with anyone. I want to know if she's been faithful. Okay, let's find out. What was it about her that you love so much? Smoking hot? No, nah, I mean, it's just... <laughs> you got a lot to learn about being married. What makes you think that your wife slept with your brother? Me and my brother got in an argument, and that's the first thing that came out of his mouth. That's why I had sex with your wife. My brother's wife did have sex with me. I don't care how drunk I was. I know what she did. She knows what she did. She's cheating on my brother. Were you drinking with his brother? Yeah, I did have a couple drinks with his brother. I was mad. I was upset. I didn't sleep with his brother. She just lies about everything. If she fails, it's over. Yeah. Cassandra and Dion had a great relationship until they moved in with his brother, Josh. Because since then, Dion believes that Cassandra has been having sex with Josh and that she may be pregnant with his child. Take a look. My girlfriend's pregnant. Things have happened that got me thinking that she's not faithful. I'm confused because my girl, she leaves at night. We argue, she disappears. She runs around and I chase her for hours and I can't find her. Where are you? What are you doing? Are you with me or are you with someone else? Which makes me think that it could be someone else's baby. We're living with my younger brother. He just moved in with us and, and, and I'm just questioning, why, why are you disappearing, you know? In the middle of the night, I will wake up two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. She'd be out of the room. I don't know where she is. And I think maybe if he, she's hooking up with him in the house or not, you know. My brother's only 18 years old. He's young, you know, he's naive. And, and, and I know he can be seduced by a woman that's pretty. I've left my phone on record all night as I slept to see if I can hear anything in the background or any movements or any other voices or things going on to try to see if I can catch in the action. It's driving me crazy. I mean, I'm sleeping up against the door to make sure nobody's coming in and out. And I'm just, ah, uh, I'm losing my mind. She's tired of, of me accusing her. She's tired of me wondering if she's faithful or asking her if she's been with anybody. And I understand, but I'm tired of not being answered because there's no answer. Every time I ask her, it's just, oh, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. I do love her very much, and I do want to be with her. But if she's cheating, I got to leave. Um, are you cheating on Dia? No, I'm not cheating on Dion. I get up and leave for whatever he says, hours at a time, because I don't have to let you sit there and talk to me the way you talk to me, telling me that I've been out with other men. You, first you ask me, and then when I give you the answer three or four times, you, you turn around and you tell me what I did. You know how many guys I've been with. You know what I mean? And your, your brother, he's... You told him about your past? Yes, I have. I've been very honest with Dion. Not a good idea. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So how long have you been with uh, Dion? Over a year. Over a year. And you love him? Very much. And the relationship was, was going pretty, pretty it was, good. It was going pretty good until his insecurity, his insecurity, I guess, from previous marriage or whatever. But that's not my fault. I've been good to him. I've been faithful. I cut off all ties with other people, you know. So you're not sleeping with his brother? No, I'm not sleeping with anyone. But he accuses you of sleeping all with All the time, all the time. He sleeps against the door so he can monitor how many times I get up and go to the bathroom. And I, and I let him know when I go anyway. And it's, okay, it's, I mean, but how, how is it to live life like that? Like, I can't imagine, like, I wake up at 3 in the morning and my wife's laying on the floor, you know. It's... Gotta go pee. <laughs> it's not... It's, it, it makes it pisses me off, you know what I mean? Like, you can't, I, I trust you, even at, even though you cheated on me four different times. He cheated on you? He cheated on me four times, and he thinks just because it's with two women. Why did you take him back? Because I love him, and I didn't go cheat on him, I stayed. He cheated with four times? Four times. With how many different women? Two, but that's still four times, I don't care. And you stayed faithful? I stayed faithful. I mean, you're pretty forgiving. I am, I'm a forgiving person, I'm also a loving person, though. I try to make my relationship work. Oh. I love him. I love him. I uh, understand that you're pregnant. Yes, I am. And, uh, and how far along are you? Um, 11 weeks and three days. And do you know what you're having? No, I think it's a girl. Oh, you think it's a girl. Well, congratulations. Uh, that's, that's exciting. Um, now... The bad part of that, he thinks it may be his brother's child. That's insane. 
That, that is kind of crazy, right? Well, how could it be your brother's child if I've never slept with your brother? Just like he has the recordings, like hours of recordings of nothing, but then he gets the recording and he comes back and tells me, well, I can hear you giving oral sex in the background. I can hear you. <laughs> like, how, dude, how could you hear me if, uh, if it hasn't happened? What, uh, how, what do you mean record? Record what? What is he... He'll take the recorder and I guess without me knowing on his phone and just leave it laying somewhere. Like he left it in the bathroom under the sink one day. So he could, uh, and he swears he hears, you know, things on there. His brother saying things to me, you know, he can hear sexual actions and sexual things being said. In the, in the bathroom? In, in, in the recording. Oh, right. It, it's in the bathroom. So everything you can eat that's going on out. I, I'm in the, I was in the room sleep while you're recording them talking all their stuff out there. When I did get up, I cleaned up the room and then I went in the bathroom and went and got in the shower and still didn't know that the recorder was under the sink. And when he came back home, I was getting out of the shower. Did, did you ever listen to these recordings? No. He always... You never played them for you? No, I mean, he plays snippets, but I there's nothing. I know there's nothing there. I haven't done you anything. You so. don't ever hear anything? I Of course I don't, because I didn't do anything. Um, what am I listening for? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> do, you, do you think he's cheating? I've thought he's, you know, after, after he told me before, I thought, you know, that he's went out, you know what I mean, and probably mingled with other people, but I, I still trust him, even though. But I mean, mingle with clothes on or off? Well, I, I really don't. I don't try to let my mind go that far, but cheating is cheating. <laughs> cheating is cheating. He's young. He's 18 years old, bro. Any female that's seducing. Yeah, You've done things to try to catch her. Gee, yeah, yeah. Like what? Let her on my tape recorder. He smokes so much marijuana, we can't test him. He doesn't even know where he's at right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys were testable. He's young. He's 18 years old, bro. Any female that's seducing him can have sex. You've done things to try to catch her. Gee, yeah, yeah. Like what? Let her on my tape recorder. Cheating is, you know, to me, it's not like a, a serious offense. I mean, it hurts people's feelings, but it's you're not, wrong. It's wrong. You're not committing a crime, is what I'm trying to say. But in your situation, it is a little different because now you're carrying his child. Yes. And if he's cheating on you, it complicates it, you know, that much more, right? Yeah, it does. But because I'm not if, what, if you, what if you're here today and now you're 11 and a half weeks pregnant and you find out he's cheating? I will leave Dion because he's put me through so much, accusing me of cheating, and I've five times, and you're out. And I haven't, I haven't cheated, but I mean, I haven't. Not even that. It's because I, I haven't cheated. I've been fa totally faithful to you in this relationship. Even took you and back. He's put you out with his brother. Yes. Okay. And, and um, I'm gone. You know, I don't deserve it. I'm well, let's it. let's meet your boyfriend, Dion. Now you know you want to stay back. Lying but you said that I'm you did fair. not hear my brother say anything about me and you lied about it. So the first thing when I heard you lying, I, honey, I, heard your I doubted say you something about all the way about everything. But as far as me being physical okay? with anybody, I'm he's physical only with talking anybody. about his pet peeves. Okay. He's only talking about we're, we're, we're heavy on him. Okay, he don't but, want okay, us here. But you said you didn't hear none of that. That doesn't have nothing to do with me. That's the only thing I was there for. You said you didn't hear none of that. That's the only thing I was there for. That makes me think that you're not being faithful You think I'm cheating on you anyway and I've been faithful to you. You cheated on me. Okay, no. You cheated on me. We were even together when that happened. We were together. We slept together that was it. No, we, we, we were together. together. No, we were not, we was not together. We was together. No, we was not. Sandra. No, we went together. We were together. I had just met you. I didn't even we really We were together. Know. Okay, towards the end. Towards we were the together, end. Dion. I don't care what you say. We were together. Nah, and I, I've been faithful I, to I, you, I and I'm want, leaving. I don't, I don't no, deserve to be treated like that. Fine. Isn't it when your woman's pregnant, isn't that supposed to be like a joyous occasion? It's supposed to be. Yeah. But it's that's not, it's not it was, for you. Not, that's supposed to be happy. For me, I was happy when she first told me, but when she started. And what has changed? The way she was acting. She, how, how was she acting? She didn't even want to touch me. I asked her, I said, let's be together. She don't know. I'm tired of room. I know. No, just talk. Oh, come on. Well, could it be because she's pregnant? I thought about it. I thought about it, but you know what I'm saying? We just been there for three, two months, and... You think she's cheating on you? Yeah, I do. Why? 
because she does she, she, she leaves me and she'd be gone for because hours, bro. I don't bro. have to let you see. I don't have to listen and to when you I, talk when to I like Where does she go to? I don't know. I, I walk around the city to look for her, man, for hours. And I, when I find her, I see her on a bus and stop I'm, with I'm somebody. And I'm always sitting somewhere you know simple in public. Like, you see her on a bus stop? I mean, she sits it's, on I'm a bus stop. I'm always in public. Just from me. But the point is, she can't have sex on a bus stop, can she? I mean, no, she can't. But you can oh, you can you can initiate the conversation on the bus stop. So you think somewhere and walk away. think you think in her condition, she's out in public. Meeting strangers, initiating sex. Well, yeah, he tells me I go behind buildings and everything. Or doing anything. He, I don't know he, what he she's doing. Do you love her? Me. Yeah, I do. And this is how you talk about her? No, I don't. This is the way. This is what I've been going through with her. You feel me? He's, I've been trying to hang tight. Even, I've been trying to hold on. I, 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 I could have been like, I could have just walked he's away. He's been accusing me since before his brother, though. But you're here because you believe that she slept with your brother. Well, I believe she slept with people. I don't know if she slept with my brother or not, but she made me think that she did because as soon as we got down there, she never got up that many times at night before we left. When we left San Bernardino, I'm when we got down there, okay, all right, cool. So you you think that not only she might have slept with your brother, I mean, is that something your brother would do to you? He's young. He's 18 years old, bro. I mean, a young a young man at 18 years old, any female that's a douche thing can have sex with. Like any but you going around accusing innocent you. people. Well, it's not easy to seduce me. It's you know, not easy nah, to seduce easy. you? Nah, it's not easy She said you slept with two different women in the short time you've been together with her. Yeah, I slept with two different Four women. Four times. Four times. I slept with two different women when I met her, when I first met her, and I didn't know what type of female we she was or what together. she was about. We were still together. I talked to her. We were hooked up. We talked. You know what I'm saying? I hooked up with somebody else. I didn't even know her that well. Feel me? But then she came to me crying out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like... You got feelings? Because we was together. If you got feelings, then I'm going to have to... You uh, asked uh, me to uh, be uh, your girl. Why, why are you here today? I want to know if she's been faithful. Because I know I did cheat. And I know I told her about it. You know what I'm saying? So I you're said, saying you did cheat? I mean, because she said it. It was cheating. So I have to respect her. If she sees it as cheating, then to her it's cheating. So I apologize. You feel me? I and apologize you had, And you haven't cheated since then? Not since then. Not nothing? No, I ain't had sex with nobody since I... You since, can't seduce you. Then. Right? Excuse me? You can't seduce you. Well, I won't let you. I won't let you. Well, not me. I mean, anybody. I mean, female or you know, whatever. I won't let nobody see you. <laughs> I'm saying, so if you went out tonight and she stayed in the hotel and you were out having drinks and some gorgeous women came up to you and said, hey. It's already happy. It's what? It's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has. And what did she say? I mean, they, she didn't try to, you know, pull me, but she just was like, you know, looking at me, you know, saying hi. And she was gorgeous? No, she was pretty. Yeah. Yeah, you know, saying hi and stuff like and that. And so if she said, hey, come back to my hotel room, do you want to go? Nah. I, I don't want to cheat on her. I don't. He smokes so much marijuana, we can't test him. He doesn't even know where he's at right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cassandra, we asked you, have you had sexual intercourse with Deion's brother, Josh? You answered no. And the results came back to that. Cassandra. He smokes so much marijuana, we can't test him. He doesn't even know where he's at right now. <laughs> You've done things to try to catch her. Cheating. Yeah, I did. Like what? Left it on my tape recorder. You know what I'm saying? Did Left you hear anything? Did you hear anything, Evans? I did. I hear people on there talking about me. I might hear my brother on there talking about me, telling me, talking bad about me, but he doesn't tell me to my face. When I asked her. Okay, but that's your no. brother talking about you. Mm -hmm. Not her. He's talking to her. Yeah, so. Why didn't you tell me? Maybe she doesn't want to cause problems between that's what two I brothers. Thought too. I heard that too. You I heard, heard that, that one too. too. Yeah, somebody said that because I brought it up to a lot of people. But, she, but so you never had evidence that she was having sex. Let him tell it, he do. <laughs> well, do, do you, I, lay, do you I, lay, do you count how many times she goes to the bathroom at night? He Man, lays in front of the door. Steve. I don't like to be asleep and people, you know what I'm saying? I told her, you know, if you're going to get up and leave, let me know. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like for people to I'm get out the, the bed. I'm going to I'm going to pee. What is okay. wrong with you? Well, tell me because it's a lot of people in this house and we just moved in here. So you'll sleep on the floor? Yeah. Against oh. the door. Yeah, I will. Oh, I'm crazy that, I mean, that's like crazy. I'm crazy with right? it, man. I don't know. I'm just crazy, but I'm not going to let you do it Does to me. Does that scare I, you I, that I, he's crazy? <laughs> <laughs> he's sleeping on the floor? Man, you it's can't go out the door. 
Because there's no because limit I, I can go to to show him that I'm faithful to him. No, 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 sometimes, but <laughs> at night, man, you know, because I'm like, man, you won't even touch me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be intimate with her, man. She won't want to touch me. I think she want to go out there. So it was I'm one time you was like that with me. And, and you ain't gonna be intimate with me. You can't like go out be intimate you. with nobody. When you were trying to meet him. So what if she, you came all the way from California to come out here and flow all the way out here? And what if she passes this light if I can touch? Right, she passed. I gotta apologize. I gotta, I gotta eat my words. I mean, but the thing is, is that I just wanted well, to know. Will you sleep the truth. in bed again? Yeah. <laughs> You're not in Springer. <laughs> um, and you feel pretty confident that you passed your light attack the test. Yeah. What if, what if you fail? Well, if I failed, I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. See, right there tells me you failed. If I failed, then she could have failed too and be telling the truth. Okay, let's find out. So, um, we brought your brother out here because he's essential to the story, saying, you know, he thinks that his, and that's your brother backstage. Um, and we tried to give him a test, but he's untestable. See? Say why. Say why, Steve. No, no, no. Say why, Steve. Why? He's smoking too. <laughs> California dream. Because he smoked so much marijuana, we can't test him. <laughs> he doesn't even know where he's at right now. <laughs> but you guys were testable because you didn't, well, you're not smoking at all, right? No. Because you're pregnant. Right. You can't do that. Right. And you laid off enough for long enough. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he's honest about that. All right, Cassandra, you took a lie detector test. And by the way, we both got conclusive results for both of you. All right. Cassandra, we asked you, have you had sexual physical contact with Dan's brother, Josh? You answered no. Have you had sexual intercourse with Dan's brother, Josh? You answered no. Since you started dating Dan, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone else? And you said no. Could anyone else be the father of your unborn child? And she answered no. And the results came back all the same. And they came back that Cassandra told the truth. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I told you I was telling the truth. I told you I was telling the truth. All right. I sent you to hell. I apologize. You took me to all that for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I love you. Sorry. <laughs> and I still stay with you. I'm sorry. Cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Should we just end the show right there? What's on that story right here, right? No, we want to hear my results. Are you, do you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I don't. You just had this wonderful emotional moment. You're hugging, you're kissing. You said, baby, let's just go home. Love her though, you know? I wanted her to be true, I did, I really did. She is. I'm proud, I mean, I, I, I I'm a so lips, man. I ain't saying nothing to you about nothing, never. Well, eh, you're lying again. Or I mean, we don't know I mean, lying. not about that. Right. Not about none of that. I ain't gonna question you no more. I promise you. And you know what? If you probably didn't smoke as much, you probably wouldn't make his paranoid, right? Right. You know, you know I'm just saying. That's, that's, really, that's true. In the past six months, have you had sexual physical contact with anyone other than Cassandra? And he said, no. And you know what the results for your lie detector test is? It should be. I was telling the truth. It should, right? Yeah. What was it about her that you love so much? Smoking hot? No, nah, I mean, it's no. just... <laughs> you got a lot to learn about being married. In the past six months, 
Have you had sexual physical contact with anyone other than Cassandra? And he said, no. And you know what the results for your lie detector test is? It should be. I was telling the truth. It should, right? Yeah. How many people think uh, Dion is going to pass his lie detector test? Really? No. So, two people in the back, but they won't keep their hand up. This guy over here, she's scratching her eyebrow. And this guy over there. Oh, and her too. You think he's going to pass? <laughs> There's another pot smoker over there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's staring at you now. All right, Dion, you came here. Three people thought you were telling the truth. What does that tell you? Where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst. What's that? All mean? I need is three people. Oh, you only need three people. Like on a jury, right? Nah. Yeah, exactly. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> before, before I would the stop system. right there. I before. would just stop right there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go any farther. Yeah. Uh, Dion, we asked him, in the past six months, have you had sexual physical contact with anyone other than Cassandra? And he said, no. In the past six months, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than Cassandra? What did you say? No. Yeah? In the past month, have you had any type of sexual contact with anyone other than Cassandra? And what did you say? No. And you know what the results for your lie detector test is? It should be. I was telling the truth. Yeah. It should, right? Yeah. You told the truth. I did. Are you asking her to marry you right now? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is, this is something different. We normally, the accuser usually fails, usually goes up in flames. And I see you're pretty emotional. Like, you're. I've been through hell, man. Again. Still. I know. I'm Maybe. sorry. I didn't want to take you through this, but every relationship before you was crap, burning crash. Me, though. Understood. I was trying to show you different. Understood. Now you have this opportunity where you have a woman that's faithful to you. She's given you a child, and you might need to, you know, make some changes in your recreational activity. Yeah. So that you don't become paranoid about certain things, right? right. And maybe say, hey, little bro, instead of a. A joint, let's have a beer. Right. Okay? <laughs> Bro, this is Bud's for you, right? <laughs> All right. Um, I want to say congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful pregnancy. Thank you. And if he gets out of line again and starts questioning you, you give me a call and we'll handle it from I will. there. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. What makes you think that your wife slept with your brother? Me and my brother got in an argument, and that's the first thing that came out of his mouth. That's why I had sex with your wife. My brother's wife did have sex with me. I don't care how drunk I was. I know what she did. She knows what she did. She's cheating on my brother. Were you drinking with his brother? Yeah, I did have a couple of drinks with his brother. I was mad. I was upset. I didn't sleep with his brother. She just lies about everything. What makes you think that your wife slept with your brother? Me and my brother got in an argument, and that's the first thing that came out of his mouth. That's why I had sex with your wife. My brother's wife did have sex with me. I don't care how drunk I was. I know what she did. She knows what she did. She's cheating on my brother. Sean believes his wife of one year, Jamie, cheated on him with his brother, Chuck. <laughs> According to Sean, Jamie blacked out during a night of drinking and does not remember having sex with Chuck. But Chuck remembers and he confessed to sleeping with his brother's wife. 
Sean needs to find out for sure if his brother is lying or his wife is cheating. Sean, how long have you been married? Uh, a year. A year. And um, you get married, happily married, right? Yeah. And, and it was going good after you got married? Yeah, it was going good for, like, the first couple months. I mean, done everything for her, take care of her five kids. She's got five kids? Yes. Kind of a big... Res did you have any kids? No. So you, you married a woman with five kids, and that's taking on a big responsibility, right? Yeah. What was it about her that you love so much? Um, I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, you don't, the you kids, don't, I mean, I love the kids, too. You love so. the kids, too? Yeah. But what, anything about her, like, you ask most men why they got married, and they're like, oh, I love my wife because of this or that. You can't give me a reason? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Smoke, smoking, smoking hot? No, I mean, it's just, <laughs> I mean, it's just how she is, you know? She's a good person. See, no. you you got a lot to learn about being married. <laughs> yeah. No, she's a good person. She's so. a good person. Yeah. And a good mom. And a good so. mom. And these are things that you want in a wife. Um, what makes you think that your wife slept with your brother? Well, we got in an argument, and I took off, and I came. I mean, she don't drink, so I came back home, and apparently, I mean, she don't even like my brother anyways. So I came home, all of a sudden, she's drinking with my brother. So, <laughs> you were like, that's I'm like, kind what of the hell? You don't you talk about him, then, so, and you don't drink. Now you're drinking and hanging and out talking. with my brother when I'm gone. Drinking know? and talking. Yeah. So leads to. <laughs> well, I don't know what it leads to, but <laughs> I thought maybe you knew. Yeah. Um, what makes you think that they slept together? Well, because me and my brother got in an argument, and that's the first thing that came out of his mouth. That's why I had sex with your wife. Oh. So, I mean, I mean, we've been in arguments plenty of times before, so, right. I mean, he never says that. So yeah. when he says, and that's why I slept with your wife, well, how did you react to that? I mean, I really don't want to believe him, but I'm so what always did, What thinking. did he say happened? He didn't really say what happened. I mean, he's not telling me that, so he just keeps telling me that he's had sex with my wife. I Numer ask her, she's no, and then... Numerous times? Yeah. He says numerous times. Yeah. So your wife just kind of like drinking? I guess so. <laughs> um, do you think maybe she has slept around with anybody else? Well, I went to her work one day to bring her flowers, and she was eating lunch and slept with some other guy. Oh. So... Okay, <laughs> nobody's ever ate lunch with a co-worker? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I, she works at a nursing home, and everybody's got assigned uniforms to wear. And he she didn't have no uniform on. So, oh, so this wasn't exactly a co-worker. Yeah, this was well, a guy. that's what I'm thinking. Because he didn't have the uniform on. Yeah, well, she, like, met me halfway and, like, stopped me, so I wouldn't walk all the way up there to see who the dude was, you know, so. So she saw you and made a beeline for you. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. What did she say about that? She just said that that was a co-worker or whatever, but the next day, dude got fired somehow. <laughs> <laughs> for, maybe for being out of his yeah. uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, so, you've been married a year. I mean, does your wife strike you as being faithful? Mm. She just lies about everything, so, I mean... Okay, so I got to ask you, Sean, why the hell did you get married? Well... I, Cause I love her and... Yeah, you say you love her, but you can't tell me why. You say <laughs> she's lying all the time. Uh, I mean, what, what exactly did you fall in love with? Mm -hmm. Probably the kids, then. <laughs> you fell in love with the kids. I mean, the kids, you know, they need a dad, and so... Are you, you and your brother pretty close? Uh, yeah. You are close. Well, we was. <laughs> well, until he slept with your wife. Yeah. Or, but you, you have doubt, though, that he actually did this. Yeah. Because your wife... I mean, wife, he talks a lot of stuff, you know, so... And I your mean, wife He can just be saying that because he knows how much I love her, and he's just trying to... And your wife has denied it. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do, Sean, I'm going to have you leave the stage. I'm going to talk okay. to Jamie, and then we'll bring you up for the results. Okay.
Were you drinking with his brother? Yeah, I did have a couple of drinks with his brother. I was mad, I was upset. If she fails, it's over. Yeah. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with anyone since being with Sean? She answered no. And it came back that Jamie. Were you drinking with his brother? Yeah, I did have a couple of drinks with his brother. I was mad, I was upset. If she fails, it's over. Yeah. You love your husband. I do love which, my husband. You know, he tells his story, and he might be nervous because he's on TV, yeah. but he says, hey, uh, he, you're a good mom, he says, uh, loves your kids, and I think that's, I mean, a young guy to step in and take care of five kids that aren't his. Great. That's right. pretty open-hearted right. guy, right? Um, what do you want to say about him? How uh, is he a good guy? Good yeah, mother? Sean's a good guy. He's he's a good provider. He's you know he he is a little jealous and secure. But other than that, you know we get along and I mean we try to. We, what did good. you guys get in a fight about when he stormed off? You know I really I'm not really like on it like that. But we started arguing because we was we like in between houses, so we've been staying with his family. And staying with and family is really, stress. yeah, it's a lot of stress. So we start arguing about being there and trying to get things back on, our, you know, get, get back on our feet or whatever. So uh, it just got out of control and, you know, you start nitpicking it. Yeah, he left. He left me at his, his family's house. So. And then you said, hey, give me a Budweiser. No, I didn't say that. But <laughs> I sat there and I waited for quite a while and he never, he never came back. He says you don't drink. I don't drink. But he said when he, he left, did. you started drinking. I did. Why? I don't know. Just I was mad. I was upset. I didn't do it to and get drunk. Were you drunk drinking with or, his brother? Yeah, I did have a couple of drinks with his brother. And just casual talking. Yeah. No. Just talking. No kissing. No. Or... No. No. All right. Um, and then he says he came to bring you flowers at work, and you were with some guy that wasn't working there. He did work there. It, um, he didn't work there long, but he was. You know, not a lot of people like working in their home, so sometimes things don't work out. So he wasn't there long. But, yeah, I was sitting there eating with somebody. And Which, we was arguing. Right. But, you know, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Right. You know, if it was a woman, I'd still be sitting there. Right. Or, and he said you came running over to stop him. So he Well, yeah, when I guy. seen him walking with the flowers, yeah, I got up and I started walking. I see my husband walking down the hall with flowers. So, yeah, I went to greet him. So nothing. I mean, right. Here's two different perceptions. He sees it as you're talking to some guy. And you're stopping him from meeting the guy, and you're saying, "Hey, my husband's coming down the hallway with flowers. I'm happy." Right. And you say the night that you got into an argument with him, you were mad that he left. You're stressed out staying with his family. You start having a couple drinks, and his brother's there. He's having a couple drinks, so you're going to talk to him. Right. Big misunderstanding. Yeah. Is it possible that you were really intoxicated and passed out, and his brother slept with you? I don't believe so. Did you pass out? Yes, I did. You did pass I did. out? Oh. I did. I mean, I, I, I didn't drink that much. I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. And it might have been not so. even passing out. You put your head back and you went to Yeah, sleep. I was tired. I was upset that he wasn't there. Hey, he I, left I like me to alone. give people the benefit of the doubt. So, I mean, he now, didn't Now, what I'm me. saying is, you didn't wake up in all your clothes were No, you? no. All right. You know, his brother went to him and said, hey, I had sex with your wife numerous times. Oh, well. Actually, they were arguing that day. See, I don't think Chuck likes me. And um, The brother. The brother. And I don't know if he's jealous of our relationship because it's something that he doesn't have. But he did, and he didn't argue. He's like, yeah, that's why I, you're with your wife, you know? And he's like, what? And then they, they've been fighting ever since then. I mean, they, they ran out in the house. They got in a fight. And, but I don't know why he would. It's just jealousy. Do you think the brother wants to be with you? No, I don't think so. No, why he just don't want me around. Why doesn't he want you around? Because him and Sean are like buddies, and now that he's with me and the kids, he he's doesn't have time to, yeah, he don't have time to run out and drink or party or take him here, take him there, do things with him. Okay, let's uh, bring your husband okay. back out. <laughs> your, your brother did leave a voicemail, and we're going to play that now. This is Charles. I'm calling to let you know that uh, my brother's wife did have sex with me. I don't care how drunk I was. I know what she did. She knows what she did. She's cheating on my brother. She needs to be held accountable for it, for real. I mean, she did what she did, so she needs to be able to admit to it and at least let my brother move on, let him know. And how many other people has she cheated on him with? I mean, he needs to know what his wife's doing. I mean, why would you marry somebody 
and then have a relationship based on nothing but lies and cheating. You know, that's that's not what's up. <laughs> yeah. See why was he saying that for? I, it's kind Sean, of very matter of fact in his voice now, you know? right? It's just kind of like, yeah, you know, I just love my brother's wife, and uh, he needs to know, and that's, I find that a little unusual. Why isn't your brother here? <laughs> no, he couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Now, I've been told by my wife that he said he would come twice. We booked him a plane ticket. He went to the airport, and both times at the last minute, he turned around and said, I'm not coming. Yeah. Why would a guy do that? He, he doesn't want to meet me? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have a couple drinks with him. <laughs> if she fails, it's over. Yeah. Why don't you tell your husband how you feel about him? I love you. I've been with you for three years. My kids call you dad. They love you. I'm a good wife to you. I haven't done anything. I don't run around. I don't, I don't cheat on you. I don't disrespect you. I don't take off. I've been good to you. And, I mean, that's why we're here. Uh -huh. We'll get the results, and this, this all has to stop. Yeah. We can't go home and keep doing this to each other. Well, it's not good for the kids either. No, it's not. Jamie, you came here to save your marriage. You took a lie detector test. And we asked you. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with anyone since being with Sean? She answered no. Have you ever had sexual contact with anyone since being with Sean? She said no. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with Sean's brother, Chuck? And she said no. Have you ever had any sexual contact with Sean's brother, Chuck? And she said no. And the results came back, and they came back all the same. And it came back that Jamie told the truth. Look at that, right? Good results. You got a good wife. You've been worrying about a bunch of nonsense for nothing, right? Yeah. And now uh, you can go back and continue this marriage. And the one thing you do need to go back is have a little conversation yeah. with your brother. Yeah, I know. <laughs>